Hey, Merle. Hey, Merle. Merle, you there? up there. Merle, can you hear me?
Good evening and welcome to Southwestern Pirates Football on the Vibe Live Network. My name is Merle Bertrand. I'm coming to you live this evening from Brookabach Field at the Georgetown IAC Athletic Complex in Georgetown, Texas. And uh, if I look vaguely familiar to your longtime Pirate fans, it might be because I had the privilege of broadcasting Pirates football in the first incarnation back in 2013 for a couple of years. Vibe Media acquired and came back sports back in 2018, and away we go. Uh, joined by somebody who played on those early Pirate teams, uh, former offensive lineman, lifetime Pirate, Mr. T.J. Vela. T.J., good to have you with us. And... Uh, here we go in 2022. Yeah, it's good to be here too, Merle. I appreciate the opportunity. And, you know, it's week one here in 2022, like you were saying. And I had an old coach that told me all the time, you can't go 10-0 without going 1-0, right? Exactly. This is the big week for the Pirates here. But in all seriousness, you know, this is the moment that we, the fans, have been waiting for. And the players in the field, they've been waiting for this ever since that last whistle happened in November of 2021. All throughout spring ball, all throughout summer workouts, this is the moment right here. You know, to line up against another team and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. Uh, it's week one of college football, Murrah. I'm getting hyped up. Don't give me a helmet. I'm going to be out there, man. Don't <laughs> give me a helmet. I think your eligibility has been used up. I'm not sure, but I, I think it's been used year. up. I may have one year. You might have one you sneak it in there. Don't tell them that. Don't tell Cal Lutheran. Well, uh, let's also hear from another uh, familiar crew member tonight uh, down on the field. He'll be down there on the sidelines uh, talking to Coach Austin. And uh, we'll take a quick break and uh, be right back before we hear from Chuck Crazy. Pirates fight for all Southwestern, for alma mater dear. Pirates fight for all Southwestern, for victory is near. To Southwestern will be loyal, to the sun far from the sky. And remember to the end, that a fight will never die. Pirates fight, yeah we win, ayy. Pirates fight, bro. Starting at center, number 55, Katie White. Starting at right guard, number 64, Max Thorne. And starting at right tackle, number 75, Ryan Kircher. We're going to try this again. It is opening night, and uh, we're going to start over sooner. So uh, we'll clip this out for the replay as we go live. And welcome to Southwestern Pirates Football on the Vibe Live Network. My name is Merle Birch, and I'm coming to you live this evening from Brookabach Field at Georgetown IAC Athletic Complex in Georgetown. And uh, we're well, joined tonight by Mr. T.J. Vela and uh, Chuck Crazy down to the sidelines, our technical director, Cinna Vincott, and Joshua Blatch. And uh, let's send it down to the sideline, uh, T.J., first. Of all, we have, we've already heard from you for a moment. Let's hear from Chuck Crazy down to the sidelines. Chuck, what's the mood like down there? Number 30, Micah Justin. The team seems to be pretty pumped up, ready to get the season started, but it is very humid out here. Um, it could cause problems for a team from California. That'll be an advantage for our Pirates. But I think the team is ready to get going here, uh, get this season kicked off, and get a little revenge on this Cal Lutheran team. That sounds good. And, uh, and Mike, let's swing it back up here. Let's get TJ back on camera if we can, uh, since we had kind of a false start there. And uh, we'll, we will wait. 
until the shot gets framed up. We're putting Mr. Mike Rose, who was back here last night, by the way, uh, the voice of the Vista Ridge Rangers for us here on Vibe Live, and he's helping us out with camera, along with Harley Hudson uh, running the camera as well. And, uh, TJ, we'll try this again. Hopefully we can hear you this time. It is college football. It is 2022. You were a member of that first Pirates, uh, one of the early Pirate teams back uh, about uh, seven or eight years ago, not to date you or anything. But here we go, 2022. Yeah, 2022. Yeah, you kind of did date me there a little bit, Merle, but it's all good. It's all good. You know, like I said earlier, it's just really nice to be back here at Brokelbach Field to get to see not just the players and the coaches, but a lot of the same fans that are right. out here, right? And they're the ones that make this environment so nice. Brokelbach Field is one of the best uh, stadiums in D3, in my opinion. And, you know, without these fans, you know, making that environment so lively, like, you can't get that anywhere else, right? So, excited to be back. It's week one. And uh, the Pirates, like Chuck was saying, looking for that revenge against this Cal Lutheran team. Yeah, these two teams met to open up the season last year. 37-7 out in California. And uh, the Pirates started slowly last season at 1-6 before rallying to win their final three games of the season to close out the season at 4-6. and six. And uh, TJ, with a ton of starters back on both sides of the ball, I've got to imagine the coach Austin and his Pirate coaching staff, they got to feel pretty good about what they've got coming into this new season. Definitely got to feel really good. You know, last year they had a really young team, you know, a lot of freshmen across the O-line, D-line, out there in the wide receiver spots. But now they're still young, but they have that experience, right? And that's what counts, especially at the collegiate level. And so having those guys with that experience, the Pirates are going to be a force to reckon with in the ASC Conference, I think, this year. Well, that sort of sets the table here. We'll take a quick break, make sure that we're all dialed in and sounding good. Sorry about the false start, but uh, it's been five years since we've done it up here. So bear with us. We'll get all that stuff kind of worked out. We'll come back and hear uh, from Pirates head coach Joe Austin. That's coming up next on the pregame show. You're watching Southwestern Pirates football on the Vipe Live Broadcast Network. First off, thank you for being here. Jordan Battles. Battles sweet over the defender. It's Crosby's second state championship appearance. How does that sound? in an isolation type situation with the receiver. Tell me, tell me when to go, Santa. And we're pleased to be joined for the first time in 2022 on the pregame show by the head coach of the Southwestern Pirates, Coach uh, Joe Austin. Coach, thanks for joining us. And uh, season open, a rematch of last year's season opening loss out in California against uh, thousand uh, against uh, California Lutheran. Uh, your thoughts on last year's game and what do you expect to be the same and different from this year? Well, we hope that a lot will be different. Last year, we were just transitioning to a different offensive system, and it wasn't a great offensive game by any means. Defensively, we did okay, but we gave up too many big plays. And they're a big play offense. Their style is to, to run it and run it and draw you in close and then go for a big play in an isolation-type situation with the receiver one-on-one -on, -one on a defensive back. So if we can limit those isolation plays, uh, execute better with our offensive system, I think we can have a pretty good game. Talk about this year's Pirates just a little bit. Uh, we were talking on the show on Monday night about how many guys you've got coming back. Nine guys, I think, on defense. Was it six or seven on offense? Uh, most of those guys experienced that game last year. What's summer camp been like for them, fall camp? And uh, 
what how do you think that's going to help them heading into this uh, opening game yeah, if, if we're totally healthy, which, you know, I don't know that we'll ever be at any point during the season, <laughs> but we could have as many as uh, nine returning starters on defense. And you know, depending on how you count receivers and tight ends and things, we could have as many as eight on offense. So we feel good about that uh, and, and the number of returning guys that, we, that we've had. We've had a pretty typical training camp in that you have, uh, you know, some, some, small, some, some soft tissue injuries. You have a, you know, a, a sprained ankle and a pulled groin and a strained quad and we just need to spend uh, the days leading up to this game, and of course we're recording this, you know, b before the game a few days. So right. uh, as we're recording this, our goal is to see how healthy we can get uh, as we come into the game on Saturday. Well, uh, you didn't want to talk about it too much, understandably, show, uh, understandably so on the show on Monday night, but the Cats are about to be let out of the bag anyway. What can fans expect to see from this year's version of the Pirates, both on offense and on defense? Uh, a lot of how we ended up last season. You know, uh, and you, you want to hold something close to the vest because <laughs> I'm sure Cal Lutheran is going to sign a coach to watch our, our show and see what I give away. Um, there's probably nobody watching us now, right? So right, right. we're, we're going to be really similar. With, with so many returning starters, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. Um, and teams always go through transitions as you go through different players and cycles with your football team. And we will always be a team that plays to our strengths and, um, and will adjust with our players. But with the number of returning players, it's more uh, adjusting and fine-tuning and, and minor tweaks rather than you know throwing stuff at the wall and, and seeing what will stick. And if we can stay healthy, I think we feel good about what our style of play will be this season. You know, it's always important to get off to a good start, obviously. You fell behind early last year. How important is that, given that happened last year, how important is that more so than usual maybe to get off to a good start here that, uh, tonight? Yeah, that's a great question. I think you know one of the, the good things about how we ended last year was in our next to last game we got down to California Lutheran or uh, to Texas Lutheran a couple scores in the first half. Mm -hmm. uh, went down at halftime by a couple scores, came back and had a dominant second half and, and won that football game. So you know perhaps it's not as crucial that everything go letter perfect at the beginning of the game as right. maybe it would have been at certain points last year. When you've got a good number of returning starters, I think you feel like. Um, we can be calm amidst adversity. We can process and, and deal with little things that might happen. But, of, of course, I mean, ideally, your season opener goes just how you want it. You come out <laughs> right. and you score on the first drive and you stop them on the first drive and you go into halftime with a couple score lead and you put them away in the third quarter. I mean, that's a script you'd like to sure. have. Um, you know, hopefully we can, we can, if it doesn't go letter perfect, hopefully we can still be mature enough to, you know, play a four-quarter game and do what we have to do to, to pull it out at the end. Well, Coach, looking forward to seeing how it goes on Saturday night. Any, fi any final thoughts here before we let you go? Excited to, to kick off the season and excited to be with Vite Media and, and have you, Merle, back as our play-by-play our -play guy. And uh, uh, I think we'll have a, a pretty good season. Of course, as any football coach will say, it's how healthy you can be. If we right. can stay healthy, I think we'll, we'll be able to roll out a pretty good football team every week. Southwestern Empire head coach Joe Austin, a guest during the pregame show. We'll take a break and be right back. And time for the national anthem and the opening kickoff. You're watching Southwestern Pirates football on the Vibe Live broadcast network. And welcome back to Brucklebach Field on the campus of Georgetown uh, ISD, uh, Georgetown High School. Merle Birch and TJ Bailey here, along with Josh Blanchard, our producer, soon of Incott, our technical director. Harley Hudson, Mike Rose, run a camera for us. And uh, Rosie Bega, our QA administrator, keeping an eye and an ear on the broadcast. Give a shout out to my better half, Christina Weber, back uh, tuned into the broadcast. And uh, we're going to turn it over to the PA for our national anthem.
All right, National Anthem, and uh, Mike, I uh, want to get that uh, Chuck and Coach down there. Let's hear what uh, Coach Austin has to say here in just a few moments. Chuck Gracie down on the sidelines with Coach. Take it away, Chuck. All right, Coach, it's been a, a few months. You had a pretty good run there at the end of last season. You want to build on that? How does uh, rescheduling Cal Lou work for you pre-conference in the AFC? They're a good team. 7-3 and three last year, and they got the better of us, but I think the key – First thing you said, we want to pick up where we left off. We've got a good number of starters back on offense, defense, and special teams. So hopefully we can have a good night. What's the mood of the team, coach? I think they're I think they're moving right where it needs to be. You know, we don't want to be too overhyped and not underhyped. So uh, I think we're doing pretty well. You think the weather's going to give us any benefits? Nobody knows. I quit looking at weather apps. They're always wrong. All right, coach. Good luck today. Back to you, Merle. All right, thank you, Chuck. Uh, Good to hear from Coach Austin. We're ready to go. You see the captains meeting there at the center of the field, as uh, Chuck alluded to. It's been nasty. It rained all afternoon. It's kind of cleared off now. Cloudy skies, TJ, but it is, you were down there talking to some of the recruits, and uh, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but you were down there talking to some of the recruits. A little muggy. You expecting maybe some cramping today, that kind of thing on both sides? Yeah, especially with it being week one. You can definitely right. expect a lot of cramping today. Um, so. The water girls and water boys down there need to make sure the team stays hydrated on both sides so we don't have anyone going down uh, with an injury because I was out there, like you were saying, Merle, and it was humid. I had my yes. towel out. I was wiping sweat off my brow basically every single time I was down there. So it's going to be one of those days, I think. So we'll see here who is just ready to go best conditioned um, for this contest. One of those days I like to say you need gills to breathe down there on the field. Mm -hmm. And it looks like, let's see, it looks like the Pirates – We'll get the football first to start the season. Cal Luthan out of Thousand Oaks, California, coming off a 7-3 season that included one win by forfeit. Over the winter, the Kingsman named longtime assistant coach Anthony Lugo as their head coach after Lugo served in that role on an interim basis last season. And uh, speaking of last season, I mentioned 37-7, the score out in California, and the Pirates looking to avenge that. As we heard on the South uh, SU Football Weekly on Monday night, TJ, you, you tuned into that, and I didn't realize it at the time. That first game last year, a brand new office installed for Southwestern. Takes a while to make those kind of adjustments, does it not? It always takes a little bit of time, especially when we have a younger team right. um, coming into fall camp like that. But the good thing is, like you've been saying, we had that whole 2021 season right. to get used to the offense, to get all of our key players aligned to what the goal is with the offense. And now we've had spring ball, we've had fall camp. So the Pirates are more than ready uh, for the 2022 season when it comes to the offense. 2022 season is already underway. Some of the conference games in the books. It's Harden Simmons over Wayland Baptist, 79 to 14. Uh, East Texas Baptist falling to University of Wisconsin Oshkosh, 52 to 13. Howard Payne overall, good friends down in Seguin, Texas Lutheran, 59 to 45, and uh, Birmingham Southern over McMurray, 26 to 9. Those are some of the early games in the American Southwest Conference. We'll give you scoring updates on some of the later games as we get started. So the Pirates set to receive, going from left to right. If you're just listening instead of watching, the Pirates. At the black jerseys with big, thick uh, goldenrod uh, piping down the side. Big, thick numerals in the black helmet. And uh, Cal Lutheran in all white. They kind of look like the Minnesota Vikings, Mike Rose. Cool, baby. <laughs> with the white jerseys and pants. Purple numerals and the purple helmet with the gold trim. No wind to speak of. About uh, 75 degrees, drizzly, rainy skies. But it's football in Texas, and we're about ready to get underway. And it's going to be a line drive kick. It's going to sail back to the one-yard line, bringing it up to the 5, to the 10, up to the 15. And knocked down there at about the 18-yard line. Good coverage by the Kingsman. And on the return for the Pirates, Elijah Norris, a senior defensive back. And Landry Gilpin will lead out the Pirate offense. First down and 10 from their own 17-yard line as we are underway from Georgetown. Emails open, by the way. Southwestern FB, that stands for football, Southwestern FB at gmail.com. As you see the offense lineup there for the Pirates going from left to right. First down and 10. Should be McQuan Marion lined up to his left. That is Marion. He's going to take the first carry off right tackle. Spins out of one tackle. Ball's on the carpet. Scramble, and it looks like Cal Luton may have fallen to the football at the 15 yard line. No word yet from the official. Looks like maybe we got, well, the defense started on the field. We might have caught a break there, TJ. The Pirates caught a huge break there. We were talking about the weather before this. The ball's going to be slick. It's going to slip out of your hands. Ball security is going to be the story of this game, I think. And if that's any, like, precursor to what could come, the Pirates need to hold on to the ball. 
Second down and 12 back at the 15-yard line. Two receivers wide left, one to the near side for Gilpin. Gilpin, quick drop, looking, rolling to his right. Got a receiver open. That's got to be a flag. There it is. As the defender for the Kingsmen was draped all over the Pirate wide receiver, Ethan Powell. And I can see that up here, and I'm getting old, TJ. Yeah, and Ethan Powell, he's such a big wide receiver. He came in as a tight end for the Pirates his freshman year, and he's only gotten a lot stronger and a lot bigger. So you have his height already, like over 6'2", and then you add in a couple pounds of muscle here and there. He's just a force when it comes to a wide receiver. So it's really tough for corners to have to measure up with him. He's more so, if you're a linebacker, then it's a little easier for them. But these corners, it's going to be real tough on them. you got to jam them early if you expect to not let Ethan Powell catch the ball today. So first down at the 25-yard line after the defensive holding. And it's two receivers wide left. Actually, trips wide left. Nobody here on the near side. Gilpin in the shotgun. Swings it out left flat. Complete to the 25. Nice move up to the 30. Bounce to the outside. 35 to the 40. And all the way after the 42-yard line. Just swung it out on the left side. And JoJo Wilson, the freshman, showing good speed to get around the edge. And I just talked about Ethan Powell, Merle. If you go back to that play, you can see that Ethan Powell got a quick block on the corner, and he drove him all the way to the sideline, which really allowed JoJo to get the corner and get above the 10-yard mark for the first down. First down and 10 at the 40-yard line. One receiver wide left, two to the near side. Gilpin. Little counter play to the right side. Looking for a running room. Cuts back to the left, and he's going to go down for a two-yard loss. Marion... Tried to reverse field, but good pursuit there by the Kingsman defense. And that play was just blown up by the Cal Lutheran linebacker at number nine, Diaz. He absolutely just saw the, he saw the basically the Red Sea part, and he went right in and caught a pulling guard from Southwestern just right in the mouth, and it really just blew up that play from the start. Second down, 11, back to the 39-yard line. 10, 13, 26 to go here in this opening quarter. Two receivers wide left, one to the near side. Gilpin in the shotgun. And off Mary. Nope, it's going to be Gilpin himself straight up the middle. Out of the 45-yard line. Digging for more is going to be about two yards shy of the first down. That makes it a very manageable third down. Third down and about two to go from the 48-yard line. Yeah, that was huge for the Pirates right there. Getting about eight yards, just making that third down, like you were saying, are way more manageable because anything past 10 yards for the Pirates, our conversion rate is not that good. So getting up there with Gilpin running the ball is huge. I asked him on the show Monday night, do you consider yourself a running quarterback or do you run to set up the pass? He said, no, I'm a running quarterback all the way. Always looking to run. Well, if you look at his high school highlights, that's all he was doing. He was yes, just trying right. to pass. He was just running the ball. <laughs> right. I'm like, Gilpin, what are you doing? <laughs> Big third down here for the Pirates. Third down and two from the 48-yard line. Receiver coming in motion. High snap, shuttle pass underneath and disrupted the timing, but... Going to depend. Now they're going to say the knee came down to the 48-yard line. I thought he may have spun out of that. They tried to shuttle pass it underneath uh, to Colby Bartlett. And Diaz again right there just came through, blew up the play for the Pirates, and now we are forced to punt here early in the first. So fourth down and two, and the Pirate punting unit is on the field. Benjamin Lancaster puts the right foot into it, sends it spiraling into the right side, and takes a pirate roll all the way inside the 20 down to the 15, and it gets another little kick in the tail. It's going to roll all the way down to the 8-yard line, so a beautiful punt. 42, about a 50-yard punt with no return. And that's big for the Pirates right there. You know, losing the senior last year, Will Hurst, he was probably one of the best offensive players for the Pirates in terms of his leg last year and then being able to switch field positions, so it seems like... I mean, it, it, nothing's lost right here with that guy. Yeah, I like exactly, that yeah. a lot. <laughs> so the Kingsmen will take over on offense for the first time this season. First down and 10 from their own nine is where they officially start this dry ball on the near hash. Led by junior quarterback Nick Lasher, 5'11", 205-pound junior. Got Isaiah Mar Martin lined up in the pistol behind him. And Smart with the carry right up the middle and runs right into a black and gold wall. Gain of a yard on the play. It'll bring up a second down and nine. And they've got a long ways to work right here. More than 90-plus yards to get to the end zone. So it's really just chipping away at it right here. So seeing that first run, that first offensive play of the season for Cal Lutheran. Second down and nine from the ten.
Two receivers wide right. Play action pass, rolling back in the end zone, being chased, and fires over to the right side. In, did it get a foot in bounds? Nope, he had a foot out of bounds. I thought that was a sensational job there by the Kingsman quarterback, and a nice job by the receiver, uh, Dalen Wilson, to try to keep that foot in bounds, but just a little wide. Yeah, Wilson, a great effort there. Almost looked like he froze right there in mid uh, midair, more like he had it, and then boom, just uh, went outside. I don't know. So a chance to get off the field for the Pirate defense. Stops the clock, 10.55 to go opening quarter. Third down and nine from the 10-yard line. Get a stop here. You'll get the ball back in great field position. Three and out on the first possession would be huge for the Pirates defense here. Lasher, quick drop. And fires over to the right side. That ball is incomplete. A little overthrown. The Pirates uh, had a better chance at that football than any of the Kingsmen did. On the coverage for Southwestern. I think it was Micah Justice. I think it was number seven, Peyton Vaughn. Number seven, Peyton. Okay, yeah. Yep. Yeah, the senior of Hazel, Texas. I know Peyton. He's a really good player. He's grown a lot since his freshman year, too, similar to Powell. And he's showing it here. He showed a lot last year, his junior year. But here in his senior year, expect big things from him. So the Kingsmen set to punt this away from deep in their own end zone. Good snap. Oh, dropped a snap. In trouble in the end zone. He's going to go down. That's going to be a fumble for a touchdown. It is a pirate defense. Bad snap. Punter tried to pick it up. Couldn't recover in time. And then on the stop, it was Patrick Nicholas falling on the football. And the pirate defense gets the first score of the 2022 season. If you could find me the man, Merle, who had those odds for Patrick Nicholas to score the first <laughs> touchdown for the pirates in this 2022 season, let me know because he's a rich man right now. <laughs> Yeah, what a difference. As Charlie Fournier, sophomore on for the extra point. Good snap and hold. Kick is up. And it is good. So 10.43 to go in the first quarter. Good start for the Pirates. Up 7 nothing, And, uh, boy. That's that's one way to get the the cobweb shaken off, TJ. Just come out and get a three and out on defense and a block, uh, a fumble recovery in the end zone for a touchdown. Yeah, this defense is going to be hyped up now. The rest of the game, momentum on the Pirates side, and I don't think there's anyone more happy in the stadium right now than Coach Creasel, the defensive coordinator for the Pirates. He's got some water cooler talk now for Coach Austin and those offensive coaches. Like, hey, who scored the first touchdown of the season? My guys. <laughs> that's who did it. Good stuff by the Pirates defense right there. So 10.43 to go, 7 nothing Southwestern. Dark clouds rolling in. Hopefully Mother Nature will cooperate with us here. Yeah, I checked the weather earlier. It said it was only supposed to rain at 3. So if it rains right now, someone's lying. Lights are on here at Berkebach Field. Home of the Eastview Patriots and Georgetown Eagles in the Georgetown ISD School District. And a short high kick. Going to be fielded at the 15-yard line up to the 20. To the 25, finds a seam and out to the 30 and out to the 33-yard line. Pretty good return there of about 26 yards. That was Dalen Wilson on the return again. And, you know, there's always two sides to a story, Merle. You know, we had the Pirates defense hyped up. They just scored a touchdown here in the first quarter of the first game. But then you have Cal Lutheran's offense, who yeah. went three and out in right. their first drive. And then you had their special teams, who gave up a touchdown in the first drive, first play of the 2022 season. So right now for them, it's all about coming back from that, compartmentalizing everything, and just being able to say, okay, we made those mistakes, but now we got to come back and just do everything better. The first down and 10 from the 33-yard line. At least they've got better field position to start this drive to the Kingsman. And a quick drop. Fires over to the left side and complete out to the 40-yard line. And that's going to be about it. About a seven-yard pickup as they swing it out on the left to Julio Angel. 
And that'll bring up a second down at about three from the 40-yard line. And that was a nice job by Rose there in the coverage. Yeah, the, the, the wide receiver, Cal Luther, made the catch, but he made sure, Rose did, to hold on to the receiver's legs to allow enough time for his teammates to swarm over there and make the stop and not allow the first down. Second down and three from the 40. And off right up the middle on a big hole, but it closes quickly. Second effort gets him out across the 45, maybe to the 46-yard line. Not sure if that was Jacques Smith or Caleb Casimir. I'm going to double-check that here if I can with two number fives. Whoever it was, Peyton Vaughn came in and laid some wood on him. Big hit right there in the hole. Yeah, he got a little bit yards after the carry there, after, the, after contact made, and got the first down. But Southwestern's defense making some good impressions right now. First down at the 46-yard line for the Kingsmen. Lasher dropping back. No handoff right side. And back to the line of scrimmage, and that's going to be about it. That's going to bring up a second down and 10 for Cal Lutheran. And that was number 17, Alexander Gomez, right there. He's from McAllen. He's another Valley boy here on this Pirates team. He's made a lot of good impacts throughout his time here at Southwestern and excited to do see what he's going to do in this 2022 season. Second down and nine from the 47-yard line. Lasher dropping back, looking under pressure, and dumps it off underneath. Caught at the 45. Breaks one tackle across the 50 and dives down to about the 48-yard line. Made something out of nothing there as they pick up about four yards on the play. It's going to bring up a third down and about five yards to go. And flash the hands there, too, a little bit. A little one-handed catch action. And then lowered his shoulder to get some extra yards after contact there. That's Isaiah Martin, number five. So third down and about four from the 48-yard line. Dropping back, looking fine over the right side, complete at the 45-yard line, and wrestled to the turf inside the 40 down to the 39. That'll be good for another Kingsman first down. Once again on the reception was Wilson. And that's the same exact play that they, the Kingsmen ran on their first play here right. in this drive here, Merle. Just in the opposite directions, that little out route. It's paying them some good dividends right now, getting that first down right there and then getting good chunks of yards earlier in the drive as well. It's a first down and 10 for Cal Lutheran at the 39-yard line with 7.54 to go opening quarter. Handoff up the middle. And up hindered in the backfield. Crashing in backside for Southwestern. Peyton Vaughn. Second nice play of the ball game to knock down Isaiah Martin. I'm telling you, Merle, Peyton Vaughn. He's going to be someone to watch with the Pirates this year on defense. You lose guys like Jackson Reese last year. You got to gotta have people step up for your Coach Austin, Coach Creasel. And I expect Peyton Vaughn to be one of those people for this Pirates defense and the team as a whole. Second and long. To receive his wide right, one of the near side. Lasher in the shotgun again. Hand off Martin right to the middle and a nice hole, but it closed fairly quickly. Knocked down to the 36-yard line. Going to set up a big third down here. Third down and seven coming up for the Kingsmen. And I was talking earlier, Merle, about the fans and the environment here at Birkelbach Field. And you can hear them right now on this third down. They're getting behind their team, making some noise, trying to get the defense, get the ball back to the offense here. Up 7 nothing. looking for the stop here in third and 7 to go from the 31-yard line. Two receivers wide right, Lasher. Play clock down to 4. Quick drop. Good protection. All day. Now fires over the left side. Completed the 30, inside the 30, and steps out of bounds at about the 26-yard line. That'll be good for a Cal Lutheran first down. Swung it out. Got to check that roster again because what I've got doesn't match up. Uh, the roster in the program, 23, is listed as Isaiah Martin, and Martin is number five, I believe, so... Yeah, I noticed that, that earlier, but I didn't, I didn't know if you had a different yeah. lineup than me. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> what was kind of throwing me off there. So I'm not sure who number 23 is. 
But we'll try to verify that when we can. Trips to the wide, to the right side. And Lasher, handoff, Martin. Inside the 25, Bullhorns is way down to the 20-yard line. Good hard running there by Martin. Picks up seven yards on the play. Going to bring up a second down and three. And whether it is Martin or not back there, <laughs> the Pirates defense cannot arm tackle this man. They have to lower their shoulder into him because he's already proven in just a few plays that you have to, if you're going to bring him down, you're either going to need the whole team right. or you're going to need your whole body, not just your arms. So Martin or... Whatever his name is right now. <laughs> pretty doing sure a good, a, Doing a good job for his team right now. Pretty sure Martin is number five. That was on the <laughs> starting lineup I got. All right. Second down and three. And it's going to get the carry again. It's going to have the first down and more upended at the 15-yard line, but it falls down to the 14. And uh, this drive has matriculated its way down the field nicely, TJ, for, for uh, Cal Lutheran. Yeah, if you're the coaches from Cal Lutheran right now, this, it seems like Martin's going to be your bread and butter as he yeah. jogs off the sideline right now. Give him a little break. He has basically single-handedly gotten his team out all the way from originally the nine-yard line to this point. Nice the first down and 10 from the 14-yard line. Trips lined up wide right, one to the near side. Dropping back. Lasher looking, looking left. Fires over the center of the field and incomplete. And Lasher had him. He had his receiver. I think it was Lopez, I'm guessing. I see the Lopez or Lamica. They're two number 11s again. And yeah, he had him. He just overthrew him. Yeah. He found a little seam in there. He found the weak spot in the Pirates defense, but luckily for the Pirates, like he was saying, overthrew him. So second down and 10 from the 14-yard line. Two receivers to the left. Handoff, new running back, and he's going to go nowhere. Going to be dropped for a couple of yards loss on the play. That was James Holland on the carry, and the Pirates fans with an appreciative roar below is going to set up a third down and long as we come up to the four-and-a-half-minute mark. Just a huge swarm of Pirates there, Merle, just getting to the ball carrier. And, you know, yes, it's important everywhere in the field, but especially here in the red zone, digging down and making sure that as a defense you are bringing everything together as a collective unit. That is the big thing if you're the Pirates defense here. So big third down coming up here once again. Third down at about 13 to go from the 17-yard line. Two receivers wide right, one to the near side. Lasher dropping back, looking left, fires left side. That ball's going to be overthrown. Good coverage down the field for Southwestern. That is Joseph Flores on the coverage, and the field goal unit going to come on here for the Kingsmen. So a bend but don't break, if you will, for the Pirate defense. Yeah, i say that's another good drive and a stop for the Pirates defense right there. And we talked earlier about the weather and how it's going to affect ball carriers. We didn't even mention how it could affect quarterbacks. We that's saw true. right there twice. Lasher overthrew his receivers, and whether it be because of pressure or the coverage of Southwestern uh, corners, either way, overthrew his receivers and now settling for a field goal here. Matthew Myers, a 35-yarder from the right hash, just inside the right hash. Good snap and hold. Kick is up. It's got the leg. Does it have the accuracy? No good. So serious bend but no break for Southwestern's defense, and the score will remain 7-0 in favor of the Pirates with 4.02 to go in this opening quarter. Definitely consider that a successful yep. trip right there if you are the Pirates' defense. Their first two drives haven't allowed a point yet. You are a happy camper if you are Coach <laughs> Kreisel. And I was speaking to Coach Kelly before the game, Coach Nick Kelly. I played with him back right. in the day, too. And we were talking about the corners and how what's different this year compared to last year. And he was saying that this year they just have to make sure to stay on their assignment. So if you see them with, you know, making sure they're on man coverage or in zone coverage, like that is what they focused on all week. He was fun to watch play, let me tell you. And Gilpin breaks out of the first tackle, gets a nice block on the edge of the 25, cuts it up at the 30-yard line, and... Had about four yards on his own and then broke free and picked up another seven. An 11-yard pickup out to the 31-yard line. And that's when Landry's fun to watch right there. When he gets in the open field, when he has starts to have those one-on-ones uh, with any defender that's coming towards him, that's when he starts getting shifty, and that's when he's really <laughs> fun to watch. And like, He's one of the best players on this Pirates team for sure. Six-foot, 170-pound senior quarterback. Trips wide left, first down to the 31-yard line. 
Gilpin dropping back on the empty back set. Good protection this time. And fires over to the right side. Incomplete. Bit of a questionable hit there, but no flag thrown. Trying to swing it out to Ethan Powell. Don't forget the emails open. SouthwesternFB at gmail.com. Give a shout out to your favorite player on either side. If you're a Cal Lutheran fan, welcome aboard. Bet the weather's better where you are than it is here in Georgetown. Yeah, keep saying that, Merle, so we don't have more Californians moving <laughs> to Austin. Keep saying that. <laughs> Second down and 10 from the 31-yard line. High snap. Gilpin gets it. Gets a block on the edge. Cuts it back up the middle. Mouse to the right to the 35-yard line up to the 37. That play looked like disaster when the ball hit his hands, but somehow he managed to squirt forward and pick up seven yards to set up a third and three. Yeah, Ramitas did just, or Ramitas for the Cal Lutheran defense came in and blew up a Southwestern O-lineman, but that Southwestern O-lineman did just enough to not let Ramirez make a tackle. And I used to have a coach always say, if you can't make a play, just get in the way of someone right, else. Right. And so right there, our guy did just enough right there <laughs> to allow Gilpin to move forward in positive yardage. Get the impression he doesn't need much. No, he doesn't. He just needs a little sliver right there, and he can get through. Third down and three from the 37-yard line. Dropping back. He opens, fires, and it was under pressure. He just kind of sidearm slung it there to get it away and avoid the sack, and the punting unit will come on again for the Pirates. And that's something we've seen here, Merle, early on, is this pressure from the Cal Lutheran defense, especially that front seven. And... A lot of the questions last year was the O-line here for Southwestern. They were a lot younger. They didn't have as much experience, and they had a lot of injuries last year. And early on here in fall camp in 2022, they also had a lot of injuries. Some of the guys like Ty Reiner, he's not playing today. And you know, right now, I think, as we've seen right here, if you're Cal Lutheran, I'm going to keep applying pressure. I'm going to keep testing this O-line, making Gilpin feel like he's uncomfortable. Right. Because if you can do that, you would allow your offense to have more, more reps and make the Southwestern defense tired. And you could find yourself in the win column at the end of this game. Well, that ball off the foot, off the side of the foot of Benjamin Lancaster and only went about 13 or 14 yards. And that will give uh, Cal Luthan pretty good field position, first down and 10 to the Pirate 43-yard line. You know, it seems like we keep mentioning the weather, but we didn't mention how the weather could affect the kickers too, Merle. That's true. <laughs> you throw a ball down your foot and just slips right off, and you have a punt like that. You wouldn't think it would, would affect us inside, but the windows are actually fogging up a little bit, so that's going to be interesting as the game wears on. Yeah, if I don't if I don't uh, say the right kids' names, it's because of the why. fog. It's because of the fog, yeah. parents. That's your story, and you're sticking with it, right? 100%. First down, 10 at the 43-yard line. Rolling out to his right, and firing over the right side, and a Nice catch made at the 29-yard line. Breaks a tackle. Stays up, tippy toes up the sideline, and finally lost his balance. He stepped out of bounds, they're going to say, at the 22-yard line. But a pretty good pitch and catch there from Lasher. Thankfully, the Pirates had the 12th defender out there with yes. the sideline because that wide receiver, Cal Lutheran, was going straight to the end zone right there. Tucker Drawdy, big tight end, coming back to bail out his quarterback. Two eighteen to go here in this first quarter. On a first down and ten at the twenty-two. Now, if you know if you saw him, our old big ninety-nine, Jalen Levine out of Houston, Texas, was going into the game right there. Guessing Coach Creasel thinks that they're going to run right here. He was right. Handoff up the middle, breaks the tackle inside the twenty, inside the fifteen, and hit from behind, but will fall forward to the eleven-yard line. And if that's Martin, he will move the chains. They get all untangled. It'll be a first down here for the Kingsmen at the Pirate 11. First down, Texas, or Texas Lutheran, <laughs> California Lutheran at the 11. <laughs> You already want rival week to be here, Merle. Yeah, I love right. it. Lasher dropping back. Fade pattern. Left side of the end zone and incomplete. Just off the fingertips. Had the receiver kind of turned around as they try to get it down to Julio Angel. Good coverage there by the Pirates. And that and Norris again. That wide receiver for Cal Luthan gave a nice double move to Elijah. And almost had it. He had Elijah, yep. you know, trying to get back and recover. Just another bad throw right there from Lancaster. Or Lasher, excuse me, um, went over the head of him. 
Second and 10 from the 11. 7 0 Southwestern on top. First quarter winding down. One receiver split wide right, one to the near side for Lasher. Hand off to Martin, and he's going to be met in the backfield and drop for a loss. Crashing in from the backside, Clayton Crazy. Is that Clayton Crazy, number two? Does he play offense and defense? I think it's Aiden O'Connell. I can't. The, the Time to get my glass. That's not number two. That's O'Connell, number eight. Aiden O'Connell, the sophomore out of San Antonio, Texas, from Central Catholic High School. A big stop there. For Aiden O'Connell, I actually have a funny story about Aiden, and when we get some time, Earl, when when Cal Lutheran isn't pressing in our red zone, we can talk about it. Well, there is a number two out there for the Pirates. It may have been Clayton Crazy then. Yeah. We'll find out from Chuck between quarters. Third down and 13. Fire over the right side, and in and out of the ends, and almost intercepted. Almost the old tip drill, almost caught, almost intercepted. It falls harmlessly to the turf, and that'll set up another field goal attempt with 34 seconds to go. Another third down stop for this Pirates defense in the red zone. There, like you're saying, Merle, Ben, don't break. Yeah. They're doing a good job right now here in this first quarter. They got it down to 11 and looked like they had some momentum, but the Pirate defense stiffens up. And Matthew Myers on to try his second field goal attempt. This one will be from 32 yards between the hashes. Good snap and hold kick is up. And he knocks it through. So 32 ticks on the clock in the opening quarter and CLU trims the Pirate lead to seven to three. And while we got a break in the action, I want to thank some of the sponsors of Pirate Football, including Antioch Georgetown, Baylor Scott and White Healthcare, Chappelle Realty Group, Chick-fil-A, Chisholm Trail Pediatrics, Hewlett Chevrolet Buick Volkswagen, Double Dave's Pizza, Eagles Wings, First Texas Bank, Gary Brown CPA, Georgetown Shirt Company, First American Title, The Golden Rule, Mesquite Creek Outfitters, Groove Line Productions, HEB, House of Gains, John F. Lewis CPA, Mighty Fine Burgers, Fries and Shakes, Miniman Press and Waterboy Graphics, Primerica Financial Solutions, Ross and Champion, Rudy's, Schlotzky's of Georgetown, Bricks and Ale at the Sheraton, Stephanie Featherstone with State Farm, Upstream Investment Partners, and Zani's Hand. You see some of them flashing there on your screen. Be sure to thank all those folks and uh, for all they do, not just the broadcast, but all they do. It takes a lot of money to run a college football program. And uh, without those folks, a lot of stuff couldn't happen, DJ. I didn't even know we had that many companies here in Georgetown, Merle. <laughs> it is a long list of sponsors, that's for sure. Uh-huh, you ain't lying. And that kickoff is going to sail back into the end zone, bringing it out to the 10, to the 15, cuts it back up to the 20. And, boy, he looked like as the helmet goes flying off. He looked like he was getting up ahead of steam. Elijah Norris, a pretty good return, knocked down there at the last second by Christopher Diaz. Yeah, big hit there by Diaz, and we've seen him before in this game. Put his shoulder down and lay the wood on a Southwestern player, and he definitely did that on the kickoff right there. So the Pirate lead has been trimmed to four. Let's see what the offense can do with the football back here in this final 28 seconds in quarter number one. Gilpin leads him out. Two receivers wide left, one to the near side. Dropping back, looking. Fade pattern to the right side, and that ball overthrown incomplete. Nice idea, stretching out the field, trying to get it out to Ethan Powell. Yeah, they've been going to him all game so far. It's like the fourth time right there. Haven't been able to connect, but once they do, get ready, because we're going to have the band playing the fight song if I'm a betting <laughs> man. Second down and 10 from the 20-yard line. Gilpin, little counter play that worked nicely before. This time, TLU was ready for it. New running back in the ball game for the Pirates. That's Gianni Tesseg. And looks like the clock is going to tick down. And don't think the Pirates are going to get another playoff here as it ticks down to three, two, one. And that is the end of the first quarter. First quarter of the 22, 2022 season in the books. Pirates up seven to three. 
And uh, let's send it down to uh, Chuck Crazy down on the sideline. First thing, Chuck, I sure uh, you heard us. Was that indeed Clayton Crazy in the stop? It's actually Jason Lund wearing uh, number two on the defense. Uh, he used to wear 94, I believe. But for some reason, he's got two on. It is the same number as Clayton Crazy. But uh, he's an offensive player and, That's and not nearly the size to play D-line. So you're right. Uh, <laughs> but it is Lund, and we should expect to see that number called a lot. All right. Well, we'll, we'll uh, make sure of that. Thanks for the note. What, what are your thoughts on the first quarter of play, Chuck? I think the uh, the defense has shown out pretty good. I mean, they gave up a little bit of yards between the 20s, but when it counted, they've really stiffened their neck. Uh, the offense is just – uh, you know, they, they're just trying to find their rhythm, and it's just a matter of time before they do, you know, as well as anyone, especially TJ up there, but you covering uh, football for so long, it takes a little bit longer to get the offense in gear than it does the defense. That's exactly right. Well, thank you, Chuck, and uh, thank you for the clarification on the name. Sure. And we'll get ready for quarter number two. 7-3 Pirates on top, Merle Bertrand, TJ Vela. Josh Blanche, our producer. Mike Rose, Harley Hudson on the camera. And a second down, a third down and nine for the Pirates. And it's going to be Gilpin with a nice run on the quarterback keeper all the way. Breaks a tackle, and he might have the first down. That was a great second and third effort out to about the 30-yard line. Thought they were going to get him in the backfield, but he had he had other ideas. A nice little draw play there from Coach Austin, really using Gilpin's strength against him the Cal Lutheran defense, they were going to blitz hard on this long third down play, and so they really just let them come up field, and the Pirates taking advantage, and it doesn't look like Gilbert was able to get to the first down mark, unfortunately, for the Pirates. However, good play call there, and we'll see if Lancaster can shift the field here. Fourth and uh, fourth and a short one, so he was stopped just shy of the first down. Cal Lutheran six first down to the Pirates, three. in the first quarter. I hear a plane, sounds like it's about to land on the field. A high booming punt, it's gonna take a sideways bounce out of bounds and Cal Luthan will start this drive with pretty good field position as the second quarter gets underway. Teams will flip sides of the field of course, so Kingsman now going from left to right, Pirates going from right to left. There is an airport here in Georgetown, Merle. I don't yes, know there is. That. It's used to live near it, and so I would always hear these planes coming in. It was not the best when you're trying to get eight hours of sleep <laughs> as a Southwestern football player, trust me. Well, I know advertisers are not above uh, flying the banner above the stadium on a game day, and I'm kind of wondering if that's what might be going on. Either that or a drone's hovering around here. They didn't submit their uh, sponsorship in time to us no, to, they to announce it, so they have to <laughs> go do other ways to make it happen for them. So a short punt sets up the Kingsman in, in business at the Pirate 41-yard line, first down and 10, just underway second quarter. Lasher, play fake, looking, pump fake, and good coverage downfield. Now he fires over to the left side, incomplete. Great coverage downfield by the Pirate defense on the coverage at the end of the play, Elijah Norris, but he had a lot of help as Lasher just had no, no place to put the football. Yeah, Lasher's eyes were looking at number 16, Julio Engel out there, and I thought he was going to pull the trigger. It looked like he may have had him on a little bit if he would have faded the ball out towards the, the numbers, but luckily for the Pirates defense, he didn't even attempt it. Second and 10 from the 41 yard line. One receiver wide left trips to the near side. Now a receiver coming in motion and settling it on the right side. Lasher, handoff up the middle, and Martin's going to be knocked down at about the 36 yard line. Pick up of about five yards on the play will bring up a third down and five. Yeah, well, it looks like we have an injury timeout on the field, so we'll let them attend to the young man. I think I caught a glimpse of 64, which is Max Thorne, a sophomore out of Agoura Hills, California. Well, what a different start than a year ago, 37-7 last year out in, in uh, T.O., California. And, boy, the Pirates get a bit of a break early on, and uh, then they get special teams play, the big uh, fumble recovery in the end zone for a touchdown on a drop snap on a punt attempt, and, that's been the scoring so far for the Pirates. Yeah, what a difference a year makes, Merle. I remember tuning into that game on YouTube last year, just watching as a proud alum, and I saw the first few plays, saw the first few drives, and I decided my Saturday night would be spent 
doing other things <laughs> 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 instead of watching the Pirates that night. But right now, they're doing a great job. Defense has played outstanding. The Pirates offense, little hiccups here and there, but they're doing well, too. And we've got an email here on uh, southwesternfb at gmail.com from Mr. David Bryant saying number 23 is Tyson Lundring. So I'm assuming he didn't say we were trying to figure out 23 before. I'm guessing that's for the Kingsmen. So thank you very much, sir. So five is Martin then. Five is Martin. Third down and six to go here for the Kingsmen. Dropping back. Pass over to the right side, complete at the 31-yard line, and dropped right there. Beautiful job in the open field, crashing in backside. That was Jamarcus Ross to keep that one from Tyson Lundring from going any further, just in the nick of time. Yeah, I say good timing by you, Dave and Brian. Was enough for the first down, however, so it's going to be first and 10 for Cal Lutheran from the 30-yard line. 12.57 to go in this first half. Lasher dropping back, looking. Flag comes down, fires over to the center of the field, batted away at the last second. Could have been intercepted. At worst, it'll be a second down and 10 as Elijah Norris came crashing in, but I think we're going to have a hold here on the offense. And Norris there. Big hit on that Cal Lutheran receiver. Said, don't come over here anymore. <laughs> I got a little bit more where that came from. And the white hat. His name's yeah. Doogie, actually, Murray. Doogie, really? I know him, yeah. I ah. know he, so I'm from the Corpus area. He's actually, he reps down there typically. Very cool. And so when I was down there Speaking talking to recruits. On the offense, number 18, five guard penalty, replay first down. When I was down there talking to the recruits, my, my sister, she's like, hey, Doogie's here. I said, no way Doogie's here. <laughs> yeah, that's Doogie. So he does college games. There you go. TJ Vela with the insight. You know, I was almost you, a ref this year, too, uh, were you? Earl. Yeah, but then you called me, so I said, there yeah, let's come up here. <laughs> well, we used to work with the Austin football officials back in the day. And oh, really? It really took the fun out of picking on the officials once we <laughs> found out all the work they put into it. Oh, yeah. It's a lot of it's work. It's a lot of work. I never realized it either as a player. First and 15 pass over to the left side. Got a receiver open and intercepted at the two-yard line. Now they're fighting for the football, but it looks like the Pirates will indeed come away with it. And hauling it in for Southwestern was Patrick Nicholas. Kingsman had him open for a second, but the ball just seemed like it stayed in the air for a long time. Yeah, I got really worried when I saw the ball in the air, and I saw a wide open Cal Luther receiver, and then out of nowhere. Patrick just came out and just swooped the ball out of there and said, give me that. And he, now the Pirates offense <laughs> got the ball here on the four-yard line early in the second quarter. So 12.39 to go second quarter. And Southwestern have to take care of the football here. That's the, that's the hold your breath part of the equation. Yeah. As it'll be first and goal from their own two-yard line. First and goal, first and ten from their own two. You may see a hard count here. Maybe trying to get the Cal yeah. defense to jump off sides. Get a little bit more breathing room there. You know, packed up right next to your own end zone. So Gilpin standing on the G of Eagles in the end zone. And he's going to keep it himself and puts his head down, picks up about two yards just to get, well, I'd say out of the shadow of his own goal post, but it's cloudy as heck, so there's no shadows to be found. Second down and eight from about the four. Gained about two yards there, so a little bit more breathing room, but not much. Not much. Clock continues to roll, 7-3 Southwestern on top here, early second quarter. It's important right here to at least get to the 10 if you're not going to get yeah. the first down because you got to ha leave room for your punter at the end of the day, and you want to give a little bit room to at least flip the field too with a good punt. Gilpin now standing on the goal line with one receiver wide right, one of the two down to the near side. And a little shuttle pass underneath. Breaks a tackle up to the five and spins out to the eight-yard line. Boy, that was a dangerous pass and a lot of traffic, but they got away with it. Dumped it off underneath to uh, to say, I believe that was, number 32, coming in from sort of the right slot position. And dangerous was right there, Merle. <laughs> it was a lot of traffic in that area, but 
you know, I like those plays a lot, especially close to the goal line, because if your running back drops the ball, it's technically an incomplete pass, right? Because right? you right. threw the ball forward. So, yeah, <laughs> the interception almost happened for sure. <laughs> but luckily enough for the Pirates, it didn't happen. We gained some yards. Third down and three from the ten. Gilpin going to take a left side, looking for running room, turns a corner and stays in bounds. It's going to depend on the spot. And they're going to say to the 12, boy, that's going to be close. I think it might be just a little shy. I think they're going to give it to him. Yeah. Hard to, I mean, the chains are all the way on the far side of the field. I could have sworn he's, I'll take it. Yeah, I saw the line judge right there. He had his hand going over his head. I was like, well, there's, I don't know if you're going to give it to him. No measurement, but luckily for the Pirates, first well, down. If there's one thing more endangered in football than a huddle, it's a measurement. Have you noticed that? They just yeah. don't do it very often. No. Especially on the other side of the field. Refs, yeah. <laughs> refs don't want to deal with that if right. there's no chains right next to them. So Southwestern picks up the first down. First down, 10 at the 12-yard line. Gilpin fires right side, completing the slot. Out to the 15. Big hole in the 20, 25. And out of bounds on the 29-yard line. That one developed pretty quickly. And Ethan Powell is straight bullying these Cal Lutheran defenders right now. Right there again on the quick screen pass. He just pushed a Cal Lutheran corner all the way to the other side of the sideline. It's just it's incredible right now what he's doing. That really helps spring JoJo Wilson for a nice reception. First down, 10 to the 27. One receiver wide to the right, two to the near side. Gilpin rolling left, good protection, plenty of time. And fires over the center of the field, incomplete. Good coverage downfield by the Kingsman. Yeah, that'll bring up a second down and 10. Well, the Pirates have accomplished the first mission. One to see the wide right, two to the near side. Gilpin dropping back. Quarterback draw. He's got a lot of running. Now he fires it. Oh, he fooled him. Complete to the 50, 45, 40, 35, 34 sideline and knocked out of bounds at the 27-yard line. The entire stadium, myself included, thought that Gilpin was going to run that football. And the defense bid on it, TJ, and the Pirates strike big. I don't know, Merle. Speak for yourself. I knew Gilbert was going to do that right there. You, <laughs> like I said earlier, I've seen his highlight film. Yeah. He's known for doing stuff like that with his feet. Act like he's going to run and then throwing it right there like he's Patrick Mahomes almost. Do it to a wide open Joey Robinson who gets his first catch of the year and a big one at that. Yeah, Robinson wasn't fooled at all. He was just, his eyes got as big as dinner plates. He was wide open out there. See, they practice that kind of thing. Right. They know Gilpin has those abilities, so you're doing that in practice, so they're just used to it at this point. Gilpin dropping back again. Now rolling to his left, giving back to his right, and gets out of trouble. And fires to the right side, complete up the far side out of the 16-yard line. Going to be very near the first down marker. They're going to give it to him. I'm pretty sure that was uh, Robinson again. No, I think that may have been Ethan Powell. I say Ethan Powell, 84, yeah. Ethan Powell, too, finally getting his first catch. He's been doing a great job blocking all day. Getting his first catch here, and another first down for the Pirates. That's enough for another Pirates first down. 9.09 to go. Southwestern in the red zone again at the 16-yard line. And Clayton Creasy on the offensive side going in now. Chuck giving us a thumbs up down there. <laughs> two receivers wide right, two to the near side. Gilpin, play action. Dumps it off underneath, out of the backfield, into the end zone, touchdown! Tasegi just out of the backfield. And... Uh, Pirates with their second touchdown of the game. First offensive touchdown of the 2022 season. That was a well-designed play. Well-designed play is right, Merle. You have the guys that you have to worry about, like Joey Robinson, Ethan Powell. You never expect the running back to come right at the middle, right. wide open. And he just walked to the end zone there. I love it right there. It spreading the love to everyone on that. A lot of touches by those uh, Southwest yeah. offensive players on that. I think everyone got at least one touch. Yeah, it's Charlie Fournier. Good snap and hold. The kick is up. And it was blocked at the line of scrimmage, I believe. No, he knocked it through. I lost. That was weird. I lost track of the football. I was like, blocked? <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know. I don't know how strong this guy's leg is, but it went all the way over yeah. the, the locker room over there. It hit a car. <laughs> Hopefully they got insurance over there. 
I've got a seam in the window. See, that's what it's. It's, it's the fog. Remember, it's, it's the, the fog. fog the yeah, yeah, yeah. So 48 knocks it through, and with 8:43 to go, the Pirates extend the lead to 14 to three. I like that drive, TJ. They really mix things up nicely. And when you think about where it started, the two-yard line yes. backed up in their own end zone. Landry Gilbert was standing in that G, like you said, went 98 yards all the way to pay dirt. Touchdown. Pirates increase their lead 14 to three. Gotta love it, Merle. Yeah, we're just hoping. Just get a first down. Give your opponents a breathing room. Five minutes later, they're 98 yards down the field. Yeah, they made me look like an idiot. At least get to the 10-yard <laughs> line. You know, we got to give some, your opponents some room to work. Ah, they're going to take it all the way to the end zone. So 14-3. to three, A little bit different story so far, but a lot of football left to be played here, obviously. And if you're the Pirate defense, you want to get back on that field. You've been having a great yeah. day so far. Only allowed a field goal, and you had them the Cal Lutheran offense in the red zone multiple times. You're excited to get back out there. Kickoff down to the 5, to the 10, to the 15, up to the 20, right side 25, and drug four to the 26-yard line. Another nice return there for the Kingsman. This time it was James Holland on the return. And one thing that I was talking with Coach Austin about Merle before the game yesterday was that for one, this Cal Lutheran team, yeah, they beat us last year. They brought back nine starters on yeah. each side of the ball. And so these players know exactly who they're playing against. They've right, played right. against these guys before. Yeah. It's like playing against an old friend almost. And so they know their tendencies. They know what they're going to do. And so right now we're seeing this uh, Southwestern defense kind of use it against the Cal Lutheran offense. And it's been real fun to watch so far. So Lasher leads out the offense. First down and 10 at the 25-yard mark at the 26-yard line moving from left to right. Two receivers to the near side. Lasher, quick drop. Swings it out in the left flat, complete to the 20. Gets a block on the edge, 25 to the 30. And knocked out of bounds at about the 31-yard line, a five-yard pickup. Alexander Gomez there, another big hit from him. Nice hustle, running all the way from the middle of the field to the Kalu sideline to keep that game at a minimum of five yards. Second down and five from the 31 yard line. And a flag comes flying in. Well, something yellow came on the field, but not a flag as they play on. And out to the 35-yard line, about a yard shy. I see it there at the 27-yard line. I saw a flashy yellow come in. But it's going to bring up a third down and one at the 35. Another big third down for this Pirates defense. Let's see if they can strap in and prevent another first down. Third and one from the 35. If you're the Cal Luke coaches here, you're going to give your ball, the ball to Martin, if I had to guess. That's exactly what they do, and he picks up the first down and more. Needed one. He breaks free and gets all the way out to the 43-yard line. That's good for about an eight-yard pickup for the Kingsmen, and they will move the chains here as the clock continues to roll with 7.27 to go in the first half. Yeah, he's regularly getting five yards of carry. So, I mean, statistically speaking, Merle, you could yeah. give him the ball every single time and march <laughs> your way down to the end zone if you're Kalu. Obviously, he's going to get tired. He can't do it every time. But right there in that situation, good play call by the offensive coach at Kalu. Well, I'm not a math major, but you get five yards at, at a carry, you're going to move it down the field pretty quickly. Yeah, I wasn't a math major e either, but that always made sense to me, Merle. Lasher. Play action. Looking downfield. Firing over the center of the field, and that ball is in and out of the hands, boy. Caught a huge break there. As for just a moment. Well, again, I've got a different uh, different number on my roster than what the PA announcer said. But he was open. And he it just fell out of his hands. He was more open than a Waffle House on a street corner right there, Merle. <laughs> the Pirates caught a break right there. Second down and 10 from the 42-yard line. Handoff up the middle and out to the 45 to the 46-yard line. About a five-yard pickup. That's going to bring up a third down at about six. Take 
And again, another big third down here for the Pirate defense. Yeah, it was 6.35 left here in the second. Pirates defense able to get a stop here, give the ball back to their offense with this much amount of time. Get a little drive going, extend their lead. That'd be ideal if you're Coach Austin. Third and six from the 46. Pass over to the left side, complete at the 50, and stumbles inside the 45 and out of bounds to the 41-yard line. That'll be good for another Kingsman first down. Dalen Wilson. And that was just another good play right there. The outside wide receiver, number 15, Connor Matsky, delivered a great block on the Southwestern defender that really allowed his teammate to spring open and get that first down. Yeah, so the roster in the program has a bunch of discrepancies. We'll clean that up at halftime, try to get something a little bit more current and up to date, so I apologize for all the Kingsman fans. Martin, he's right, and he's going to be stacked up at the 43-yard line. Going to lose a yard in the play. He's going to bring up a second down and 11. Hold up, Martin. Didn't they send us this roster? Didn't they have to send us their roster to put into our program? Well, I've got to see. Yeah, they did. That's they not did. on us, Merle. Don't, don't apologize <laughs> for that. <laughs> Unless this is last year's roster. No, this is this year. This is up to date. What's going on? I'm going to dig around in my email here for the two deep that Coach Austin gave us. That might be a little bit more current. Second down and 11 from the 42-yard line. 5.15 to go here in this first half. 14-3, Pirates on top. Lasher dropping back. Looking pass over to the left side, incomplete. A little bit too much mustard on it, and Wilson unable to hang on to it. Yeah, that pass just a little bit outside of his reach right there. Skips off his hands. Long third down here for the Kingsmen. Third down and 11. Yeah, it's totally different. I'm looking at the two deep the coach sent. Totally different from what they've got printed in the program. So we'll try to go with that here. Dropping back. Lasher. Fires over to the right side, and that ball is incomplete. Stride for stride coverage as they try to get it down the field. And that was just a great recovery there by the Southwestern defender. Conjuring wide open for the Kingsman. It yep. looked like he had, he could catch that one in stride. It was better thrown. And then just a great recovery there for the underthrown ball and just making sure that he did not catch it. So kind of in four down territory here. The ball spot at the 42 yard line and Calu going to go for it here with 5.03 to go. I don't know, Merle. I don't trust him. Could be a fake. Could be. Oh, yeah, the punting unit is on. Good snap back. They're going to try to pooch this one short. Fair catch call for him. Made it the 11 yard line. Just did a good job holding that one in and maintaining possession here. And Southwestern will get it back with 4.57 to go here in this first quarter, or first half. They'll have it at the 13 yard line, which is, you know, that may, may as well be in the middle of the field when you start a drive at the two, right? Yeah, Coach Austin's like, guys, we've done this before. This is no sweat off our backs. Let's just go do exactly what we just did on the previous drive and put it in the end zone for six. So first down and 10 for the Pirates at the 13-yard line. Empty back set. They spread it out. Gilpin rolling to his left, and he's going to dump it off underneath, complete to the near side to the 18-yard line. About a five- or six-yard pickup there for the Pirates. On the receiving end of that pass was Colby Bartlett. And continuing from the previous drive there, Gilpin doing a really good job of connecting with his wide receivers, catching them at their breaks, and making sure that he's putting the ball right where only they can catch it. Right. And we're seeing a lot of good plays so far from this Pirates offense. Pick up a five, second and five from the 18. Trips wide right, one of the near side, empty back again for Gilpin. Dropping back, looking, finding over to the left side, and turn around, caught the ball just in the nick of time, digging for more all the way out to the 34-yard line. Great job there by Ethan Powell. First to turn around and, and uh, draw it in, and then to break free beyond the defense. He's too big, Merle. He's too strong. You need more than one guy to bring him down. We've proven that time and again. First down at the 33, clock rolling, four minutes to go in the half. Same formation again. Gilpin, this time rolling right. 
Baca starts to break down. He fires him to the right side. Oh, in and out of the hands. Threw it just a little bit behind his intended receiver. And I guarantee Georgia Wilson would like to have another crack at that one. Yeah, most definitely him and the whole Pirate offense right now. And if you're the Pirate offense, if you notice, Merle, some of those other plays, they were quick passes. Yeah. Not allowing the defense for the, the Cal Lutheran uh, Kingsmen to come through and make a play. And Landry got away from it right there. So we'll see here if Coach Austin maybe wants to go back to the quick passes and just enable his O-line to have less stress when it comes to holding up this Cal Lutheran defensive seven. Second out and ten from the 33-yard line. Same empty back set, high snap. Gilpin's going to keep it himself this time, and he's going to cut up the 35-yard line, keeps the feet churning, gets it off to about the 39-yard line. That'll pick up about five yards on the play, maybe six, and set up a key third down here, third down and four. And a timeout. Official's timeout. Official's timeout, yeah. That boy Doogie. <laughs> I think it might be an injury timeout for... One of the Southwestern old linemen, number 69. Oh, yeah, I see him limping now. I was going to say, I don't, s don't see anybody on the on the turf, but, yeah, I can see him limping now. Yeah, he, he was down there for a little bit, and we were talking earlier, it may be a cramp, Merle. You know, here late in the second quarter, you, you start feeling it, especially as you're the Southwestern offense that's been on the field quite a bit. And if you're Coach Austin, it looks like he may be calling a timeout here once this, the, the play, clock, play clock goes down. And that's exactly what's going to happen. So 3.21 timeout. to go here. 14-3 Pirates on top. Season opener. Next week, the Pirates make the trip to uh, Mississippi to take on Bellhaven. That will be the only game of the year that we don't broadcast for you on Vibe. The decision made to broadcast only in-state games. So be sure to check southwesternpirates.com for the link to the Bellhaven broadcast of that game next week. And uh, we'll be back in two weeks up in Belton to take on the two-time defending national champion Mary Harden Baylor crew. What a way to start conference play. Yeah. Well, no, we'll start conference next week. I mean, against uh, Bellhaven, correct? Uh, we, I, that's what I thought, too. But okay. Coach uh, told me on SU Football Day. Oh, for Day. us. Yeah, for yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I thought you were talking about them. Was, yeah, 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 yeah. For us, yeah, that'd be good. It's a good little start. Yeah, yeah. It's a beautiful stadium that they oh, have out is. there at UMHB. I get to be out there Friday night because Vandekrift is taking on Waco Midway and they're playing. At Mary Harden Baylor, so Merle, do you ever I'll, sleep? Scout, I'll, I'll scout it out for us. I say, Merle, you, you work all the time. <laughs> You're doing a lot of games. Third and four from the 39-yard line. Let's pick this one up. Trips wide right, one to the near side. Gilpin. Firing over to the right side. Got his, oh, just off the fingertips again, I think, of Wilson. That one a little bit wider than the last one. And Southwestern will probably punt this one away and try to flip the field here with 317 to go. No sense in taking a shot early. You're up by 11. Your defense is playing exceptionally well. Now, you, especially with only three minutes left here in the second quarter, you don't want to give the Kingsman offense any type of advantage. Your defense is playing really well right now, right now, and I would just try and pin them back as, as much as you can. So set to punt this one away is Benjamin Lancaster. The last two... Won't go on his highlight reel. Let's see what he does here. A much better job this time. That's more like what you're used to seeing. And a fair catch called for and made at the 30-yard line. James Holland hauling that one in. And the Pirate defense looking to get a stop here one more time. It's actually Dante Coxum. I'm not even going to use this roster in the program. It is so totally different. <laughs> First down and 10 for Cal Lutheran at the 30-yard line, moving from left to right. They've got three minutes and 11 seconds to work with. And a 14-3 Southwestern lead. Lasher, handoff up the middle, and diving out to about the 35-yard line. Make it the 34, about a four-yard pickup, and yeah, that'll bring up a second down and six. Boy, Martin, he's been a workhorse. Yeah, he's been the star of their offense so far with the Kingsmen. Only thing is right now with under three minutes left, you can't run the ball every single time. Right. So luckily for the Pirates there, going to be forced to throw with Lancaster. Lasher, excuse me. One receiver wide left, two to the near side. They send a man in motion. 
And dropping back, firing over the left side, caught on a dead run to the 40, up into there, across the 40, out to the 41-yard line. And we talk about Martin being a good runner. He picked up a good block right there on a blitzing Southwestern linebacker to give Lasher just enough time to connect with his receiver right there. Jaden Klein on the reception. That'll be first down and 10 for Calou at the 42-yard line. Clock rolling with 2.22 to go. Trips here to the near side. Receiver coming in motion right to left. Dropping back. Flag comes down, and they're going to blow this one dead. So more than likely an offensive penalty. Yep, procedure is the call. That'll temporarily slow down the Kingsman here, make it a first down and 15 from back in the 37-yard line. And if you're Calu, that's not what you wanted. First and 15, your offense is not built for that right now. Especially with two minutes, 13 seconds left, you're trying to get almost, what, 70 yards? Yeah. Down, like 60-plus yards the end zone? Not ideal for them right now. So first and 15 for back of the 37. One receiver left, two to the near side. Lasher, quick drop, fires over to the right side and threw it behind his intended receiver. Angel, the intended receiver, but it... Throw a little bit behind him. That'll bring up a second down and 15 from the 33-yard line. And for a Cal Lutheran offense that hasn't been able to connect on a deep ball yet, those short passes are critical for them right. to be able to move the ball down the field. So you got to execute if you're Lasher and make that throw and put it into the chest of your receiver. One receiver to the left, two to the near side for Lasher. Then Klein in motion on the right side. Play action. Pocket starts to break down. Lasher rolling to his right. In trouble. Fires over to the right side. Dumps it off underneath. Complete to the 40, the 45. And shoved out of bounds at about the 50-yard line. Make it the Pirate 49. About a yard shy of the first down. But a nice job there by, uh, I believe that was Klein coming back and helping out his quarterback. And Klein wide open there. Made the most of that catch with the yards after catch right there. Still not enough for a first down, though. You gotta wonder if they might be in four down territory here with 1.43 to go. Get the stop and third down, worry about fourth down later. Third and one from the 49. Two receivers to the left, one to the near side. Gonna throw it on third down. And that ball is incomplete and almost intercepted. And I don't understand that one right there, Merle. No. Nope. We, we talk about Martin all game getting at least five yards for you. You can get one yard with him. I mean, <laughs> I, I don't understand that one. Cam I, don't, I don't get paid to make calls. I That's just get right. paid to broadcast. That's right. Camden Terry right there on the coverage for the Pirates and the punting unit is on. But kind of like before, I don't necessarily buy it here on fourth and one. And they're going to they're gonna call a timeout and think about it. Don't forget the email is open. SouthwesternFB at gmail.com. SouthwesternFB at gmail.com. The thing is, like, even if they run it there and don't get it, the clock still goes. Yeah. And Southwestern then has to burn a timeout. Right. So it's like now you, you're here. The, your receiver went out of bounds in the previous place. So the clock's already stopped. And now you're just giving Southwestern an extra at least 30 seconds to work with when it comes to their offensive drive here. Yeah, that's a great point. It's all those little things, isn't it? Everybody looks at the big plays and all that kind of stuff with the highlight stuff, but it's all those little things, all the clock management stuff that goes on mm -hmm. that often makes a difference in a football game. Yeah, it's not just football, too. You think about every single sport, Merle, there's a small things in every game, yeah. whether it be in baseball, basketball, golf, you know, all these things that could just make that difference there at the end. That's the beautiful thing about sports, Merle. So fourth and one from the 49. Matthew Myers looking over to his side, and they're missing a guy. That's what they're waiting on. He said, give me give me that guy on the left side. My wall's a little short. Dookie should have let him snap it. <laughs> Punt angles over to the right side, and got to get away from that one. Really get away from boy right between the legs, and it's going to be down at the one foot line. Wow, that worked out pretty well for the Kingsmen. And if you're the Southwestern offense, you've done it from the two yard line. Why why not do it from the one? Yeah. 
Just show off a little bit for us. 127 to go, up by 11 in this first half, but it's first and 10 from your own inside the one yard line. This takes me back to 2017 in Abilene against Hardin Simmons. We were in the same situation, second quarter, one yard line. We were probably at about three minutes left to go, so not we had a little bit more time than they do right now, and we were able to drive it down the field on them and uh, score a touchdown to bring it a little closer there um, before halftime. Right. We used a hard count to get Harden Simmons to jump, so we'll see here if Coach Austin maybe wants to do that. Well, especially first game of the season. Everybody's going to be a little <laughs> jumpy and not quite as disciplined as they might be a month Most or two definitely. from now. Gilpin just gets out to about the three or four-yard line. He took that snap in the shotgun about five yards deep in the end zone and plowed his way out to about the three. As Ryan Austin writes in, Coach uh, Joe Austin's brother says, looking good and sounding good. Welcome back to SU football. Thank you, Ryan. It's very good to be back up here again. I think I've met Ryan a few times. I met up, up in Wisconsin. Oh, really? Yeah, a long road trip up there when they played up there back in the day. My freshman year then, I guess. Could have been, yeah. Y'all throw up there? That was a crazy trip. Oh, my gosh. I had a, no, I, I had a game out in West Texas for Vandegrift, caught the early morning flight, and flew out there. They, they, the team was kind enough to bring the gear up for me, and we did the broadcast that night. That was a, a wild trip. I was younger then, TJ. Off to the 11 and spinning out to the 15. Still on his feet. Took a big shot at the 19-yard line, but a 16-yard run from Gilpin. Good to see him get up because he was spinning. And he, he was kind of blindsided there in that hit. Yeah, that one hurt me, Merle. <laughs> <laughs> that was a big hit. But Gilpin, he's strong. He's a lot, a lot bigger than he was his freshman year because of the southwestern strength and conditioning that we have. And he took that hit, got right back up, said, let's do it again. Clock ticking down 30 seconds. Pirates in no hurry here. They're you know, still not in great field position. Kingsman will get the football to start the second half, so the Pirates are going to be content to go to the locker room here up by 11. Unless they take a shot. You never know. They could throw one to Ethan Powell. He's out there wide. Let him go up with the jump ball. Up hand off up the middle. And out to the 23-yard line. Doc Marion on the carry. He's been relatively quiet tonight, but he picks up four yards there, and that's how the first half is going to come to an end. A good half of the Southwestern Pirates, a special team touchdown early, and a nice offensive drive that covered 98 yards, and we've got a 14-3 score. Your immediate thoughts as we wait for a, we'll wait for Chuck, see if he's hanging here for a second, see if Chuck can intercept Coach Austin on his way to the locker room. He's looking for him. All right, he's got him. We'll send it out to the sideline to Chuck Crazy and Coach Austin. Chuck? All right, Coach, uh, pretty good first half for your crew, uh, especially on the defensive side of the ball. What kind of things uh, do, you, do you got to clean up here in the second half, keep this momentum going? Well, really, really good job by our defense. We can do a little bit better on some special teams. Um, and then we're getting going on offense, so I think all things are moving in the right direction. But – uh, what a great half by our defense to take, have some short fields and, and hold it just three points. A pretty impressive drive there by your offense coming off the two-yard line, taking it all the way in. Yeah, it was. We, we needed that. So, like I said, I think things are all going in the right direction. Another half of football. I keep saying pick up where we left off. <laughs> right. right at the game of the game. Been saying that pick up where we left off more and get you. Well, good luck, Coach. Thanks. Back to you, Merle. All right, Chuck, we'll keep it on you for just a second. What are your thoughts on the first half? It was a, you know, you, you kind of touched on all the high points. The defense playing really, really well. What's the atmosphere and the mood like down there in the sideline heading into the locker room? Well, you know, it was a very impressive half for the defense. The offense, you know, as we mentioned a little bit earlier, it took them a couple of drives to really get going and moving. And that, that Cal U or Cal Lou uh, defense, you got a lot of speed on it. Uh, they may be limited in numbers for the being a travel squad. Right. Those two deep uh, quality athletes there. Well, Austin Josh. If the special teams in order, we could be fine. And uh, what's the, what's the uh, atmosphere like on the sideline? What are the guys? Are they all pumped up? I mean, season opener, how could you not be, right? He might not have heard me on that one. That's okay. How's it, how's it, yeah, I'm getting drowned out here by the music. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just asking what the move was like on the sideline. Are the guys pretty pumped up heading into the locker room, or is it kind of business as usual? You know, it really is a little surprising because I think I'm a little more pumped up than they are. <laughs> uh, it did look like they were just there to do what they're supposed to do. 
and uh, you know a lunch pail kind of attitude about it. So uh, I, I would expect uh, them to come out and put work in in the second half, just along that that attitude. All right, Chuck. We we'll appreciate it. Uh, try to get out of the heat and humidity for a little bit. We'll see you in the second half. All right. Chuck Gracie doing a great job down to the sideline and. Uh, 14 to 3 your score as the cheerleaders entertain the crowd here. Nice crowd coming out, braving the weather with you never know if rain's going to come down. And uh, we've got some interesting stats here. Uh, for Cal Lutheran, Nick Lasher, 10 out of 23 with 98 yards, one interception, one big interception. Uh, the workhorse Isaiah Martin, he's on track for a 100 yard game, 15 carries, 54 yards. But really, TJ, that only works out to 3.6 yards per carry. So the Pirate defense doing a pretty good job keeping him contained. Yeah, doing a really good job then. So my five yard a carry prediction was wrong then. <laughs> That's good to know. Um, but no, three yards a carry, very good. But the Pirates defense, I think the big thing for them has been those third downs. Like, what do we have for third down stops right now with the conversions for Cal Lutheran? Because right now, it just seems like the Pirates are able to stop them on every single third down so far. Yeah, I'm looking for that. Third down efficiency there, 5 out of 10. 5 out of 10, so, so 50%. 50%. Yeah. Uh, Pirates only 1 out of 5, but they haven't been in third down very often. So no, they haven't been there that often. For Southwestern, now Landry Gilpin, 8 out of 14, 128 yards and a touchdown. That's a pretty nice half of uh, passing the football for a so-called running quarterback, right? Yeah, but he's been showing the legs, too. Oh, yeah. He's been showing the legs. Uh, but like you were saying there at the end, the Southwestern running back, Number five, Jaquan Marion, not really having the, getting a lot of chances today. Expect a big second half out of him, I think. Yeah, I agree. Only uh, three three attempts, one yard net uh, with a long run of four, and I think that's the yard that, uh, the play that came right there at the end of the first half. Uh, Gilpin, you mentioned uh, doing a good job with the legs. Nine out of 63 on the ground, averaging seven yards a carry uh, with a long of 15. Uh, five Pirates that touched the football uh, to Sagi, Bartlett, Wilson, Powell, and Robinson, all with catches. And it is Joey Robinson leading the way with 46 yards. Uh, the touchdown reception by Tasegi out of the backfield, no less. And mm -hmm. that's kind of your story right now, 14-2-3 with the Pirates on top. So, yeah, I'm seeing some different names on here that I've been calling. So we're going cl to clean up the roster situation in the second half and uh, appreciate your patience. It is opening night, and it's 14-3 to with Southwestern on top. Emails open. Paul Lund writing in. Says offense looking good, defense looking good, video feed good. That's what we want to hear. Thank you, Mr. Lund. Shout out, Mr. Lund. Appreciate that one. 14-3 your score. Email uh, southwesternfb at gmail.com. So let's go ahead and step aside. We're going to catch our breath here. A shorter halftime than you might be used to with high school football. If you tune in, only about a 20-minute half. So we'll uh, just run some spots and uh, catch our breath. Be back for the second half. This is Southwestern Pirates football on the Vipe Live Broadcast Network.
Hired Athletics would like to thank the following sponsors for their continued support. Groove Line Productions, John F. Lewis, CPA, House of Games, Chisholm Trail Pediatrics, HEB, Hewlett Chevrolet Buick Volkswagen, Eagles Wings, Gary Brown CPA, First American Title, State Farm Agent Stephanie Featherstone, Bricks and Ale at the Sheraton, and Upstream Investment Partners. SU Athletics thanks them for their continued support. Ladies and gentlemen, as we get ready to start the second half of play, we would like to express our appreciation to the following sponsors of Pilot Football, First Texas Bank, H-E-B, Double Dave's Pizza, Minuteman Press and Waterboard Graphics, Primerica Financial Solutions, Green Line Productions, Eagle Wings, Schlotzky's, Upstream Investment Partners, Mighty Fine Burger Fries and Shakes, and Rudy's Barbecue and Country Store.
Welcome back to Birkenbach Field. 14 to 3, your score here at the end of the first half. The Southwestern Pirates on top of the Cal Lutheran Kingsman, Merle Birch and TJ Vela, Josh Blanche, our producer, Mike Rose, and Harley Hudson running the camera. Rosie Baker, our QA, keeping an eye and an ear on the broadcast. My better half, Christina Weber, out there tuned in the broadcast. My mom tuned in from the great state of Illinois. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I love I that for I, you, Merle. I, I, I turned her into the, the biggest Viper fan at the, the state of Illinois, so my next goal is to turn her into the biggest Pirates fan of the state of Illinois, see? Well, I think you, you're doing a good job, Merle. I think you keep <laughs> doing that. Like, that's going to be inevitable. Speaking of Pirates fans, here's a name that goes way back to our first time doing these broadcasts. Nick Ma oh, Bob Mask tuning in. Nick Bass, Mask, uh, a member of the inaugural Pirates back in the day. You probably played with him, and uh, Bob Mask is tuning in. From the first year, checking in. So thank you very much, Bob. Good to hear from you again. Good to be back out here. And uh, the Pirates on top, 14 to three. What are you? What's your? Uh, what's your? What's your prediction for the second half, TJ? Prediction is the defense is going to keep doing what they're doing. They're going to hold up and keep this Cal Lutheran offense um, from gaining any more yards. Well, they'll gain some yards, but they're going to keep getting at least more points like that. Um, and then Landry Gilpin, he's going to continue to step up. And then, like I said before we ended, Jaquan Marion, I'm predicting him to have a big second half of the Pirates offense. Well, I did go uh, next door and uh, track down a current updated roster uh, from Cal Luther. So for all you uh, Kingsman fans that were tuned in, the roster in the program had quite a few discrepancies, so this one should be quite a bit better. Thank you for your patience. Is that Coach? Coach Debo? Right in front of us? That's that man, Coach Ebo. Wow, there you go. He doesn't coach football anymore. He's just the head track and, f and field coach. I saw him at the scrimmage. I didn't realize he wasn't on the coach's roster anymore. But, uh, yeah, I, nice guy. And, boy, you know, it's one of the things about the Pirates is a lot of the coaches have been with Coach Austin since the program started back in 2013. You mentioned Coach Creasel. Yeah. And uh, uh, well, a lot of them. I mean, Coach uh, Ross. Coach so. Ross, yeah. Yep. Coach. So, and, of course, a lot of former players, not a lot, but several former players like Nick Mask, like uh, uh, Kelly. Coach Bishop, too. Coach Bishop, yeah, have, have become uh, become coaches now after the playing days ended. Yeah, it's really cool to see. And they're all just a bunch of great guys. And so for me, after graduating in 2019, I've been afforded the opportunity to go hang out with these guys right. outside of, you know, uh, the whole coach-player relationship. So Coach Ebo, we go out sometimes. We go out to have some chicken wings. We Coach Mass, Coach Torres, the old equipment manager, we've had some good times. So it's really cool to come back and, like, see these guys like that. Funny about Nick Mask, I did a documentary about the program returning back yep. in 2013. And at the time, they only had about nine guys. They hadn't had their full recruiting class, and Nick Mask was playing quarterback. We talked about that a little bit when we were here at the scrimmage. So yeah, you, you do what you need to do, right? Yeah, thank God we got a new recruiting class. <laughs> Nick Mask at quarterback would have been terrible. I'm sorry, Mr. Mask, that's tu tuning in. I'm sorry, but your son was a better linebacker for sure. So you got to be careful now. Your media, you got you got to worry about that conflict of interest, see? See, unless they find my Twitter or something, I think I'm okay, Merle. <laughs> I got burner accounts. I'm fine. There you go. 14-3, <laughs> Pirates on top. It'll beat Kingsman football to start the second half. And, again, if you're just listening instead of watching, the Pirates in the all-black jerseys and pants, the big, thick goldenrod numerals, and piping down the side with the black helmet. Cal Lou and white across the way, white jerseys and pants, purple numerals, purple helmet with gold trim. We're on the radio, too? No. Oh. No. Well, like you said, if you were not watching, you just listen. Well, some people do. They just kind of put on the, on the ah, stream. Ah, like and background kinda, noise? Like background noise, yeah. We keep them entertained. If you're not tuned in, like, what are y'all doing? Y'all got to watch, watch. Come on, guys. <laughs> we got a lot of equipment up here. They better be watching. We, we even know how to use some of it. Y'all, we set everything up. Well, I didn't. I didn't. I'm not taking credit for that at all. <laughs> Josh set it up, and the rest of the Vite Media team. I'm only smart enough to talk, and I'm barely good at that. <laughs> <laughs> well, so far, Mother Nature has cooperated. The rain has stayed away. It kind of cleared up right about 30, 45 minutes before kickoff. So just warm and humid and breezy. Well, not even the breeze. The breeze has kind of died away. Yeah, it's, just, it's looking and feeling like a normal September night at this point here in Georgetown. Charlie Fournier set to kick it away from the 35-yard line. And we're underway in the second half. This kickoff is going to sail inside the 5, to the 5 to the 10 to the 15, and trying to get around the edge, gets the corner turn to the 15 to the 20. Still on his feet to the 25 and tripped up at the 27-yard line. Dante Coxum on the return. And it'll be first down for Calou. 
from about their own 26 yard line. And we'll see here if the Pirates defense can come out ready to play coming out of halftime. Had some insider sources, Merle, telling me that they were listening to California Love by Tupac in the locker room <laughs> here at <laughs> halftime. They're ready to go. They're fired up to get these guys from Kalu. All right. Trips wide right, one to the near side. Handoff. No nope, play action pass. Rolling to his right, Lasher looking downfield. And he's just going to tuck it under and get what he can get. Ooh, that was close. That was, that was hold your breath there. That could have been a flag called on Peyton Vaughn, but the official keeps it in his pocket. It's going to be about a three-yard pickup, second and seven. I held my breath on that one. Nah, Doogie and his crew knew better. They're not going to throw a flag on the senior Peyton Vaughn. <laughs> Come on, Merle. Second and seven from just shy of the 30-yard line. Just underway, second half, 14-3 Pirates on top. Two receivers wide left, one to the near side. Lasher, handoff up the middle. Martin, the workhorse back. He's got a big hole. Put lowers his shoulder and bangs it out to the 44-yard line, maybe even the 45. That'll be a 15-yard pickup and a Kingsman first down. And Martin picking up right where he left off in the first half. Big run right there. Lowered his shoulder. <laughs> put down the law right there with authority. 5'11", 215-pound sophomore out of Bakersfield. First and ten for Calhoun. They've got it at their own 45-yard line. Three receivers wide left, one to the near side. Klein comes in motion, settles in off the left side. Hand off up the middle again, Martin. And this time he's going to be stacked up, but still rugby piles it forward to about the 50-yard line. Turned a three-yard pickup into a five-yard pickup, and that'll bring up a second down and five. And there's always those hidden yards, Merle, on every single football player. You know, right there you got stopped for a three-yard gain. But he got those extra two yards. There's right. always an extra two yards to either gain or lose when it comes to football. And right now, Martin, the whole game has just been winning those extra yards. And it's been helping his team out. Hasn't shown in the points column yet. But they're hoping maybe it will here in the second half. Second and five from the midfield strike. Ball on the near hash. To receive us to the left, one of the near side. Klein goes in motion right to left this time. And they're going to give it to to Martin off right tackle, and this time the Pirate defense there to stack him up. Maybe a two-yard pickup, and that'll set up an interesting third-down situation here for Calu. I'm the Calu coach, and I'm giving it right back to Martin. Short third down play upcoming here. I think you just got to go with what works for you. And right now, Martin, like you're saying, he's their workhorse. It's working right now. He's averaging 3.7, you said, a half? Yes, sir. He can, that's uh, right here. That's the right in his uh, yard is right here. Third down and three. Trips wide left, one to the near side. Dropping back, looking. Pump fake, fires over to the middle, and almost intercepted. Boy, that was close. Jamarcus Ross, the 5'8", 175-pound junior, had both hands on the football, just squirted through. But the consolation prize, TJ, is it's fourth and three, and the punting unit's on for the Kingsmen. And nice pressure there by the Pirates defense to Alexander Gomez coming in. Giving a big hit stick to Lasher as he was releasing the ball. Fourth and three from the 48 yard line. Good snap back and a high kick angling over to the sideline. Going to be fielded right there at the 13-yard line and managed to pick up about two yards. That didn't look like much. That's one of those things, again, Elijah Norris uh, hauling that one in. It saved about five yards in the bounce. So one of those little things makes a big difference. Yeah, Elijah Norris doing his best Derek Jeter impression right there, getting down into a baseball stance just to get that ball that was going right at him. I thought it was going out of bounds, I did Merle, too. And then, boom, just tiptoed right there on the sideline and went straight to him. Got a little worried, honestly, honestly. Like, I thought maybe there was a chance to bobble it, but luckily enough, he secured it and they tackle immediately, and the Pirates get the ball here at the 15. A couple of high school games going on tonight on Vibe out of the Greater Houston area. Friendswood defeating Willow Ridge 35 to nothing, and it's North, Northbrook over Alding 21 to nothing at the half for any Houston listeners that might be tuned in. One receiver wide left, one to the near side. Play action pass. Gilpin now in trouble. To his left, fires over to the left side, and a sliding attempt made that's going to be incomplete. And yeah, they try to get it down to JoJo Wilson. 
JoJo's from the Houston area, so yeah. he's from Richmond, so I'm sure we have some Houston listeners if his family isn't here already. Of course, we had about 20 broadcasts on the network last night in Austin, Houston, San Antonio, and DFW. Goodness gracious. Mike Rose, our camera operator, the voice of the Vista Ridge Rangers. He was in this very stadium last night as Vista Ridge fell to Georgetown, unfortunately, for our Vibe Live viewers. Didn't realize Vibe did so much. They have so much coverage. Goodness. Second down and 10, dropping back Gilpin, looking, rolling right. And yeah, pocket breaks down. He's kept himself alive and a sliding attempt made at the 29-yard line. They're going to say incomplete. Had a little help there from the defender to make sure. Yeah, so that was Clayton Tracy on the attempted reception. Almost made a sensational shoestring catch. I believe I saw number two. Yeah, I think that definitely was Clayton Crazy. And unfortunately for the Pirates here, a long third down after two close plays. Mm -hmm. And the coaches next to us not happy right now. So third down and 10 coming up here from the 15-yard line. But two receivers wide right, two to the near side. Gilpin fakes a shuttle pass underneath. Now looking and rolling right, good protection. Now reverses the field to his left in trouble. Gets a block, fires over the near side, and almost hauled it in. Crazy again coming back to bail out his quarterback. Laid out, couldn't quite haul it in. Gilpin kept it alive as long as he could. But the Calhoun defense gets the hold and the punting unit back on for the Pirates. I mean, just based off of that, Gilpin's one of the most exciting players here in the ASC, I think, possibly in D3. He can do things on his feet that a lot of quarterbacks can't do. And right there, wasn't able to connect with, with his receiver, but never know. Might be able to later on, extend some plays. We've seen it already with Joey Robinson earlier in the second quarter. Good snap back. Lancaster will hit it about the five-yard line and a nice spiraling punt. Fields it at the 48-yard line. And makes the first guy miss, takes it down to the 40-yard line. Nice job there by Dante Coxham on the return. That's where we CLU will start this drive in. Pirates we got a flag, got a flag for down. We got a oh, flag. Oh, hold everything. And it looked like Lancaster was getting up. Maybe roughing the punter. Come on, Doogie. Give me something. <laughs> oh, it's just running into the kicker. That'll just be the five yarders. So not enough for the first down. Running is only five yards, roughing 15. So the Pirates just elect to let the punt stand on its own. Other ASC games final. Harden Simmons over Wayland Baptist, 79 to 14. University of Wisconsin, Oshkosh over ETBU, 52 to 13. It was Howard Payne over Texas Lutheran, 59-45. Birmingham Southern defeating McMurray, 26 to nine. And uh, looks like a final out in Arkansas. We've been there, Hendricks over Austin College, 20 to nothing. Mary Harden Baylor and Muhlenberg and Sol Ross against Trinity, no scores on those games. They started at six o'clock. First down for the Kingsman at the Pirate 40 yard line. Lasher pass over to left side, complete to the 31-yard line, going to be inside the 30, and breaks free as the helmet comes off. They're going to say he stepped out of bounds at the 28. Well, right there, as soon as his helmet comes off, the play is that's dead yep. immediately. So even if he didn't step out of bounds, that's where they'll mark him. It's one of those safety things that no one sees those Jason Witten catches anymore right. where they're just no helmet on running to the end zone. Yeah, we had, a, we had a touchdown taken away last night because the helmet came off and the ball carry oh. kept on going, but... And it's like a flag, too, if they keep going. It's like, what do you mean? Like, I, I, I'm a player. I'm a competitor. I'm going to keep <laughs> going. <laughs> oh. Well, went from bad to worse. Personal foul called on the Pirates. So, tack on half the distance. And CLU with their deepest penetration. No, that, check that back. They were down at the 11 in the first quarter. But they've got it at the 14-yard line. The Pirate defense is going to have to stiffen again. Yeah, Doogie just broke my heart right there. <laughs> but Pirates defense has been here before. Yep. Made two, two or three stops already in the red zone. See if they can do it again. First down at the 15-yard line. Lasher, handoff to Martin. He's tripped up as he crosses the line of scrimmage. Dives down to about the 13, a two-yard pickup for Isaiah Martin. That's going to bring up a second down at about seven from the 12. Isaiah Martin on the 10. 11-08 to go third quarter. Pirates on top, 14-3. They've led all the way here. But the defense being tested here, second and eight from the 13-yard line. One receiver wide left, two to the near side. 
Dropping back. Lasher fires over to the right side, caught at the five, and dropped immediately, but that's going to be a first and goal here for the Kingsmen. The receiver may have been a little shaken up on the play as they get it to Tyler Shimomura, looks like. Listed as a quarterback. And I'm yeah, that's number eight. And he did a really good job right there of getting inside the Pirates defender, not allowing him to cross his face and then really just enabling himself to catch that ball um, and where only he could. First and goal from the four for the visitors. Their deepest start of the night. Martin lined up in the pistol behind Lasher. It's inclined in motion left then right, dropping back, looking, looking. Pocket breaks down, rolling to his right. Still running, still running, and just fires and throws that ball away. Actually almost put it in play. But good pursuit there by the Pirate defense. Yeah, Pena Sanchez almost made a play on that ball. Jason Lund and Moria Williams-Jack on the uh, applying the pressure for the Pirates. That'll bring up a second to go from the four. Yeah, he did almost make a play on that ball. I thought that he was just going to throw it away, and it was in the ballpark. Yeah, he looked like Santonio Holmes for the Steelers against the Cardinals <laughs> that one Super Bowl. He almost made a toe-tip catch right there. Second and goal from the four. Lasher in the shotgun again. I predict number five is going to get it. Yep, he does off left tackle, and he's digging towards the goal line, and the Pirates are going to stack him up just in the nick of time. In fact, they shove him back. That's only about a one-yard pickup. That second effort there, I thought he was about to get away and scurry into the end yeah. zone, but the Pirates just continue to swarm on him, not allowing him to go anywhere. And player down now for Kalu. Yeah, well, it looks like one of the Oh, that's cramp a cramp. Yep. That's a cramp. Any time the leg goes up in the air, you know it's a cramp. You got to drink your water. You got to eat your pickles, eat your bananas. We can't be cramping out here. They don't have this kind of humidity out in Thousand Oaks very often. Yeah, California's listening. It's very humid in Texas. <laughs> very humid. It's hot all the time. It's not worth it, trust me. TJ Vela, you're anti. Uh, what's what's, what's uh, the beer I'm looking for? I'm not anti anything, Merle. Chamber of Commerce, that's the word I'm looking for. The anti-Chamber of Commerce guy for the state of Texas. I'm pro good home prices. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pro keeping <laughs> Texas how it is. Meanwhile, Mike, uh, Mike and I are looking at each other. He's from Minnesota. I'm from Illinois. And uh, There's a reason y'all are in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> y'all got here before everyone came. <laughs> <laughs> Because you can carry a towel around, trust me. <laughs> yeah. Third and goal from the three. Lasher rolling right, looking. Firing towards the end zone. Fade pattern, and it is going to be incomplete. The Pirate defense looks like they might get a stand again. We'll see if the field goal unit comes on here as CLU will try to maybe get to say one possession game. Now, if I'm Cal Lou here, I'm going for it. They're going to go if for you're it. On the four, I'm, you're on, if you're on the three yard line here, you're down. 14-3, to three. you got to go for it right here. This is momentum right here. If you can get this, this is just it gives your team a little spark. Yeah. And if you don't, I mean, like if you kick another field goal, that's another win for the Southwestern defense. That keeps their momentum up. They are going to go for it. Big play, play of the game here. Fourth and goal from the three for the Kingsmen. I think Martin's getting it. Lasher dropping back. Pass over to the left side. In and out of the hands of the intended receiver. If he hauls it in, it may have been a touchdown, although the Pirates had good coverage. And uh, Peyton Vaughn may have stopped him anyway had he even hauled that one in. That was a bang-bang play, but he dropped it, and it's a turnover on downs, and the Pirate defense comes up huge again. Yeah, Peyton Vaughn was there. He was, was going to make a play on it, but it doesn't even matter. Wide receiver for Cal Lou drops it, and the Pirates for the third time today starting within their own five-yard line. Well, I think he drops it because he hears Peyton Vaughn closing in quickly. He hears those footsteps. Yep. Peyton Vaughn walks lightly, though. You don't <laughs> really hear him. You know, he's like a he's like a cat. You know, he just gets over there real quickly, like a ninja defender. almost. Yeah. All right. So another stop. First down and goal. I'm getting a crick in my neck because the Pirates have had the ball deep inside their five-yard line about four times tonight. Hand off, Marion, out to across the five. Flag comes down, and they're going to have it even deeper on their own side of the field that this is a hold as I anticipate. Right 
waiting for the call. I haven't seen an indication yet, but it was thrown so quickly. Do you want second and ten, or do you want first and about twelve? That's a decision for the Kingsman coaching staff. Those hidden yards, remember, Merle? <laughs> <laughs> right. They're going to decline it, so they'll take the play, second down and ten from the four. That's our first holding penalty of the game, if you can believe that, Merle. That's pretty crazy. Yeah, there's holding on every single play. Trust me, as an offensive lineman, <laughs> former one, there is holding on every single play. So the fact that that's barely our first one, surprising. It's actually second and seven. They gave him three yards on the play, so second down and seven. There's Marion off right tackle. Nice hold across the 10, 15 to the outside. Spins across the 20 out to the 23-yard line. Jaquan Marion gets him out of the shadow of the end zone. First out of the Pirate 22. Maybe that was Coach Austin's strategy. Rely on Gilpin's legs in the first half, let Marion rest a little bit. Right. And give him the ball here in the second so we can run down the clock and just run down the field for the Pirates offense. Coming up on the nine minute mark, up by 11. First down and 10 from the 22 for Southwestern. One receiver wide, right two to the near side. Hand off on the end around, trying to turn the corner. McMarion's gonna spin back, cut it inside, and a nice pursuit there by the Kingsman defense. Really strung that play out pretty well and nothing doing. No gain, second down and 10. And I don't know if you saw it right there, Merle. Jojo Wilson, number 80, the freshman out of Richmond, absolutely pancaked that cornerback in front of him. He got up flexing. I see you, freshman. <laughs> I see you up here. Second down and 10 from the 23. Two receivers wide right, one to the near side. Gilpin going to his right. Shuttle pass underneath. And out across the 25 to the 27 yard line. There he is again. Has one of the two Pirate touchdowns on the day. That's Tasegi. Makes it a manageable third down here. Third down at about five. Coach Mass, the OC, really does love that shuttle pass, doesn't yeah. he? It's about the third time we've done it yeah. already. And so far it's worked. So, I mean, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah, right exactly. Merle? Keep running it until they stop it. Big third down here for the Pirate offense. Third down and five from the 27-yard line, but two receivers wide right, one to the near side. Gilpin. The Sagi around the nose. Gilpin kept it. Had me fool. Got it out to the 29-yard line. That was a pretty good play fake, but he only picked up about two yards. Sold that pretty well, but the CLU defense was all over it, and the punting unit's going to come out here for the Pirates. Yeah, Gilpin faked out everybody except for the defense. Right. So... Take that as you will. Well, they had the best view of the house, so right I, there on I the like field. our view. Yeah, that's true. We have AC. They yeah. don't. We had so we had brisket sandwiches, sausage sandwiches. <laughs> they didn't. Dante Coxum set to receive the punt. He's standing just inside his own 40-yard line. And Lancaster would love to get one to turn over here. Good snap back. Ooh, that was a beauty. Into the night sky, fair catch called for. It's going to take oh, a pirate nice. roll. Inside the 20, inside the 10, still rolling. They're going to escort it all the way down to the two-yard line. How about that? A drive that started on their own three. They didn't uh, They didn't get the score, but they sent it downfield about 98 yards. Yes, Lord, Lancaster, what a punt. I love that. You talk about flip the field, Merle. Like, that is... Like, that's it right there. That's that is right exactly there. what every special teams coach wants their punter to do in that situation. And Cal Lou hasn't been in this spot before. No, they haven't. We haven't seen them pinned in their own end zone. We'll, right. So we'll see how they react, you know, this close to their own end zone. And Kudas of Lancaster, he shanked one in the first half that went about eight yards. He more than made up for it right there. So Coach Austin said going into halftime, special teams need to be better. I mean, there you we go. really only had Lancaster punting. <laughs> so, I mean, <laughs> who, who else could you really talk about? And Lancaster already doing a lot better. So last round, the O with Patriots on the left end zone. Handoff right up the middle, and Martin plows ahead to about the four to pick up a couple yards. It'll bring up a second down and eight. 6.20 to go, third quarter. Pirates nursing a 14 to three lead. And it looks like we're gonna have a timeout here. 
officials time. I've got to shake it up. Uh, I'm guessing it's another cramp there. Very humid here in Texas. It is. <laughs> <laughs> so I've heard. Got to drink that Gatorade. Drink that water. As your player comes off the field, they trot another one on, do the Kingsman. They'll take over now, second down and eight from their own four-yard line. Lasher dropping back in the end zone, swings it out right side, complete, and he is, breaks the first tackle, breaks the second tackle, and still on his feet all the way out to the 18-yard line. That play should have gone for no gain, but Martin out of the backfield, little wheel route. He did all the work himself, and that's a first down for the Kingsman, also shaken up in the play for the Pirates, so it looks like uh, Peyton Lindemann, Ludeman, hobbling off the field. That was a big boy run right there. Yeah, it was. And you said earlier, they look like the Vikings. Well, I, I came into the field and I saw them. I was like, man, they look like LSU. And right now, Martin's looking like Leonard Fournette out there, how he used to look for LSU, running over people in the purple and gold. First down and 10 from the 18-yard line after the clutch pickup. Now Klein is the up back, hand off to Martin, and they're going to do a little shuttle reverse here to the left side. Pirates have it strung out. Can they get to him? And they do. Goodness. What a beautiful play there by Peyton Vaughn, who else? Snuffed out the reverse big time. Goodness gracious, the hustle on that man. And I actually think that was number 17, Alexander oh, Gomez. Oh, 17, not seven, okay. And we've seen him do that time and again all day today, not like so drastic, but right there, just <laughs> a tremendous showing of effort, tenacity to make that play. He had us in the press box going, ooh. Had the crowd going, too. I think it was Johnny Borjas, the wide receiver, just could never get the corner turn around. We've got her shaking up Kingsman player at the 20-yard line. But, yeah, what a great hustle play, as you mentioned, by Gomez, number 17, not number 7. And those are the best types of linebackers, right? They're the ones that have no quitting them. They're just a yeah. never-ending motor. And he found that extra gear. Looked like he might get out run, but he found the extra gear and just got to him and brought him down with authority. Yeah, it looked like number 93, John Guerrero, was going to get to him, my boy from Kingsville. We thought he was going to get to him, but he had, he had to take a better angle because he got outran there. But then Gomez came out of nowhere and made that play. Injured player for CLU. Just got the number there as he got up, number 74. And that is Josu Castro, a junior offensive lineman from L.A. And I mentioned his name just now, Merle, John Guerrero. I got to give another 361 shout out to him right there. I'm from Corpus. I'm Odom, but I'm t I say Corpus. Right. He's doing a great job all day of plugging up his hole. And Martin, yes, having a good day. But wait a second. Did we get a turnover? We must have. We got the ball at the 20-yard line. So I didn't even see it. Did Gomez strip that ball? He must have. Gilpin going for it and caught it again. Into the end zone, touchdown. Oh, my goodness. Wow. How's that for a turn of events? I did not even see the turnover. He must have stripped the football. And uh, the Pirates strike quickly. You see, I saw Gomez. I saw the whole defense coming over the sideline, but I thought it was because of the injured player. That's what I thought. No, it's because this man made a heck of a play and got the ball back to his team, and the Pirates on the next pl offensive play score a touchdown. You can't write it better than that, Merle. Looked like Colby Bartlett hauled it in the way the, uh, his teammates are mugging him on the sideline, and it's 20-3 to with the extra point bending. You see, I was like, cause I heard the band playing the fight song, and I was like, I don't know why the band's playing the fight song right now. <laughs> we got a turnover. That's perfect. I love it. Yeah, I think it was a heck of a tackle, but... Uh, Oh, yeah, that I, was, I don't it. think it warranted the fight song right. at all, but and now like, you know why. And 48 drills it through, so with 5:08 to go in the third quarter, new score 21 to 3 in Southwestern, in command of this one. But still, plenty of time left. Still over 20 minutes of football. You cannot take your foot off the gas right now. No, nope, but if you're that defense right now, going back out there for Southwestern, you're hyped up. You you want to go get another turnover at this point? Go make another play. Well, they got two. They got the interception in the first half, and then. Really none bigger than that one. Actually, three because they uh, – If you had the special teams the in special there teams, with the, the, yeah. the touchdown they had, which honestly should have been a safety. The should punter, The punter looked like he was right on top of it. Right. Just squirted it out, I guess. I think he got knocked off the ball, and the Pirates are there to pounce on it. 
So 21-3 Southwestern. Again, the email opens, southwesternfb at gmail.com. Give a shout-out to your favorite player on either side. Let us know where you're tuning into the broadcast from. Fournier, a sophomore. And he drills this one, a line drive kick. That's going to sail five yards deep into the end zone. I think the return man was going to bring it out, but he mishandled it and wisely takes a knee. You know, I just realized, Mar, we haven't had a fair catch on a kickoff yet or a touchback. That's true. That's the first one right there. And I don't think it was by design. No, he wanted to take it out. He did. He wanted to make a play. Yeah, I thought so. I wanted to make sure why Charlie Fournier sounded familiar. Former kicker from Vandegrift. So you just have connections there. I got Merle. a connection, yeah. I love it. I don't want to say until I confirmed it for sure. So. <laughs> you don't want to be wrong right there? And that explains why the kickoff went five yards deep into the end zone. He had a bunch of those for the Vipers. So you're used to calling it like that. Yeah, right. Makes sense. First and ten for the 25 for the Kingsman. To receive his wide left. Handoff up the middle, Martin. And nice hole. Hurdles the man. Gets it out to the 29-yard line. About a nine-yard pickup. Yeah, they're going to mark him just short, just though, shy, the first yeah. down. So second and short, second and a foot. Offensive coordinators love second and a foot. Especially when you have Martin in the backfield. And off up the middle. And Martin's going to pick up the first down and more up to the 40-yard line, maybe the 41. And that'll bring up a first down here for the Kingsman. As the clock continues to roll, that's the good news for Pirates fans. 4.27 to go. Got to give a shout-out to the big fifth-year senior right there in the middle, Nick Hackett, number 77, out of Lone Oak, Texas. You know where Lone Oak is, Merle? I don't. Most people don't. <laughs> <laughs> I've been before myself. It was an absolute gem of a time. I loved it. Small town living, 100%. Shout out Devin Shaw. First down and 10 at the 41-yard line. Pass over to the left side. Complete down the dead run to the 45 across the midfield stripe into Pirates territory down to the 40-yard line. A 19-yard pickup as they get it to Stanley As Asigbu. And it's going to be good for a first down for the Kingsmen. It was what the Pirates defense hasn't allowed the Kalu offense to do is string together big plays like that. Yeah. So we'll see here. They're moving a little quicker. Kalu is. If that affects the Pirates defense at all. Martin lined up at the pistol. Trips to the near side. I see Agbu moving to motion now to the right side. They're going to give it to Martin off the left side. And big hole of the mills to the 30. Stays on his feet. Pounds it down to the 25-yard line. Starting to gash the Pirates defense a little bit. Another big play. That one goes for 15 yards. And they're doing it both on the ground and in the air, something we haven't seen from them yet. And right now the Pirates not able to respond. Well, they're just now getting into the Pirate zone, see. They're coming up in the red zone, so now the Southwest defense is going to mm -hmm. make, their, make their stand. So that's what it is. The red zone is where the Pirates defense is. Right. Okay, we got to right. strap up here. we gotta, we got to <laughs> do a little different. Just to your side, one wide left. Lasher in the shotgun. Swings it out right side, complete to the 30. And hit hard at the 26-yard line. Maybe even lost a yard on the play. What a play there but for the Pirates. That is Blaine Corkin to knock that down. That was cocks him out of the backfield, and he took a, took a shot, second and 11. Blaine Corkin, I need you to chill, beast. That was a <laughs> big hit right there. Clock continues to roll. Second down, they give him the line of scrimmage. He deserved that for taking that kind of a shot. Second and 10 from the 26-yard line. Handoff, right side. And stacked up the line of scrimmage. Maybe fell forward for a yard of the play. That was Alexander Gomez again. Yeah. Getting in there, putting a big hit on Martin. That was actually Dante Coxum on the carry. Martin's getting a breather right now. So it's Coxum, the junior running back, for the past couple of plays here, number four. 
I'm really surprised I don't see Martin on the field in a clutch situation like this. Yeah. Hope he's all right. This is probably four down territory here for Calhoun, though. They're probably letting him get one more play of rest just in case they don't get this. Third and ten from the 25. Two receivers wide left, one to the near side. Coxham stays in the game behind Lasher. Receiver comes in motion left to right. Lasher dropping back. Fade pattern right side. That ball is caught into the end zone. Touchdown. Got behind the defense. And hauling it in was Tyson Lundrig. And CLU has their first touchdown of the 2022 season. They trimmed the lead now to 21-9 with the extra point pending. And if you're the Pirates defense, that's not what you want right there. Last year, finally getting the confidence and making his throws on this drive. About four completed passes right there, and then the biggest one being that last one there, a touchdown pass to make the score 21-9. Daniel Burgos is the kicker. I've been calling the kicker's name wrong because of the roster error I had. So Daniel Burgos is the kicker, not Mike Myers. Good snap and hold, and then Burgos... Oh, they faked it. The fire to the left side, and they're not going to get into the end zone. The conversion attempt was no good. Interesting. Very interesting. Was that Merle. a design play? It looked like it was. I, it looked very designed to me, Merle. That's why I'm saying interesting, because at this point, at this point, that does, I mean, yeah, I guess it's still a two-possession game no matter what, but you know, any, every point matters at this yeah. point. Yeah. Like, I mean, if you, if you kick the extra point, you're down by 11. Yeah. Now you're down by 12. If you make it, you're down by 9. I'm not sure if that was worth the risk, but... Well, if you make it, you're down by 10. So, so I guess you then get, you know, a, true. a touchdown and, and then a, a field, field goal. goal. But I don't know. But we've got over 16 and a half minutes of football. Exactly. That seems but like we said earlier, yeah. we don't get paid to make those calls. We get paid to make That's these right, type of right. calls. That's right, right. But that's half the fun of second guessing, right? Yeah. We get to analyze their calls. That's right, what the right. fun is. Got an email here from Kerry Stone. Says he wants to give a shout out to number 73, Eli Taylor, uh, the long snapper on the Pirates point after attempts. His dad is East Texas legend Michael Bill Taylor. He's in attendance tonight. And that's Shelby DC coach Sherry Stone watching live from Center, Texas. Thank you very much, Coach Stone. And thank you for the email. Twenty-one to nine. Pirates lead has been trimmed to twelve. Let's see what the offense can do here. And this kickoff is going to sail up to the six-yard line to the ten, to the fifteen, to the twi just shy of the twenty-yard line. Took a big hit. And Elijah Norse gets up. First down, ten Pirates from the nineteen-yard line. As Megan Lambert says, hello, thanks for broadcasting so we can watch at home in Moore Park, California. Please send a shout out to Coach Casey Bloom on Cal Lou. The family is all watching. That's from the Blue family. So thank you very much, Megan. Hope you're enjoying the broadcast here from Texas. TJ doesn't want anybody from California to move here, though. So I don't, just realized don't it's, get any it's ideas. 7 o'clock over there right That's now. Right, this is yeah. actually like prime time for them. <laughs> I love it. Maybe I need to move out there. Maybe I need to get away from the humidity. <laughs> First and 10 from the 20 for the Pirates. See how the offense responds here. Handoff up the middle. Nice hole, 25 to the 30. 35 and stumbles at the 42 yard line. Looked like he may have stumbled. No, Mary. he dropped the oh, ball, he Merle. He football. fumbled it. And yeah, looks like Cal Lou's going to get it back. Boy, a tough break for the Pirates. Yeah, it looked like he had dropped the ball and then everyone was going to scramble for it. And that was correct. I mean, you go back, he had fumbled on the first play of the game. Yeah. Got it back. Right there, no one touched him. That's what the the worst part is. It just slipped right out of his hands. It looked like he kind of stumbled trying to cut, and he probably lost concentration. And the ball came out. That's a tough break for the Pirates. Oh, after a big play, so now the Pirate defense needs to make a stand here, or this game's going to get very interesting. 122 to go, third quarter, lead by nine, but the Kings win a great field position at the Pirate 47 yard line. And this is a huge, huge drive for the Pirates defense right here. They didn't get a long break right there. They're probably a little gassed right here. Momentum's not on their side. They need to buckle in right here, make a stop. Lasher in the shotgun. He's going to hand it off to Martin. Who else bounces it left side? Nice inside the 45 to the 40 up the far sideline. Stiff arm knocked out of the 32-yard line. But again, another 15-yard pickup. He picks up right where he left off last drive. 
Another big, big gain right there for the Kalu offense. First and 10 from the Pirate 33. Trips here to the near side for Lasher and company. Martin lined up in the pistol behind him. Klein settles in off the right side. They're going to give it to Martin. He's going to cut it right up the middle. And this time the Pirate defense responds. Maybe picked up a couple of yards on the play before the hole closed up on him. Going to bring up a second down and eight from the 31-yard line. And we probably have one more play coming up before we get to the fourth quarter here, Merle, with 35 seconds left. Seeing a couple of drops of water on the window here, just like a light shower. Don't see any umbrellas in the stands. Second down and eight from the 31 yard line. Lasher dropping back. Good protection now. Fires over to the right side, and that ball's going to be overthrown. Try to get it out to Klein. But uh, pretty good coverage there from Peyton Vaughn. And it's going to bring up a key third down. Third down and seven from the 31-yard line. Stops the clock with eight seconds left in the third quarter. And honestly, I think this is still four-down territory here, I Merle. agree. With the Pirates' defense a little gas, if you don't get this, I think you come right back out and yep. run it on fourth down. The key here is to get a little bit of yards, I think, make it a little more manageable if it's a fourth down play. Pirate fans making noise. Third and seven from the 31. And whistles blow, a flag comes down. Coach Austin's happy as this one's going to set him back five yards. Big mistake right there by yep. Kalu. Big mistake. You can't do that. You can't let your concentration get away from you in a crucial moment like that for your team. Yeah, There's a big difference between third and seven and third and 12. Now you're basically forced to pass unless you know for sure you're going on fourth down here right. and can at least get to fourth and five with a run. Martin, two yards deep behind Lasher, trips here to the near side. Klein comes in motion right to left. Lasher dropping back. Pocket starts to break down. He's going to fire over to the right side, and a sliding catch made at the 12-yard line. They're going to give it to him. It's going to be a first down. He threw it where only the receiver could get to it, and a sensational catch on the sideline by Julio Angel to bail out the Kingsman. And Lasher took an absolute shot right there at the end of the play. So a great play by him to be able to put that ball on the money with pressure in his face to convert for his team. And we've reached the end of the fourth, uh, the end of the third quarter, 21-9, but the Kingsman threatening Pirate Football on Vibe Live. I want to thank again all of our sponsors of Pirate Football, including Antioch Georgetown, Baylor Scott and White Healthcare, Chappell Realty Group, Chick-fil-A, Chisholm Trail Pediatrics, Hewlett Chevrolet Buick Volkswagen, Double Dave's Pizza, Eagles Wings, First Texas Bank, Gary Brown CPA, Georgetown Shirt Company, First American Title, The Golden Rule, Mesquite Creek Outfitters, Groove Line Productions, HEB, House of Gains, John F. Lewis CPA, Mighty Fine Burgers and Fries and Shakes, Miniman Press and Waterboy Graphics, Primerica Financial Solutions, Ross and Champion, Rudy's, Schlotsky's Georgetown, Bricks and Ale at the Sheraton, Stephanie Featherstone with State Farm and Upstream and Investment Partners, and Zani's Hands. Thank you to all of those folks for your sponsorship of Southwestern Football. I want to invite everybody to come out to the Georgetown Sheraton every Monday night at 6 o'clock for the SCU Football Weekly with Coach Joe Austin. We'll be streaming it on Vite.com as well if you can't make it out. We'll have highlights of this week's game and look forward to next week's game in Mississippi against Bellhaven. Player interviews, coach, all sorts of good stuff. That's Monday night at 6 o'clock. First and goal from the 12. Handoff, Martin up the middle, and he leaves his feet, and he's going to be knocked down at the 10-yard line. He's going to make up a second down and eight from the 10-yard line. Well, here we are, Merles. Yep. When you say that the Pirates' defense steps up in the red zone, we've seen it before. Let's hope we can see it again right here. You'll, you'll take a field goal in this situation. Oh, most definitely. And now you think back to that decision to go for it on two. If you have to take a field goal here, that's a great still point. a two-possession game. Yeah. Obviously, we're not there at that point yet, but it makes you wonder. Second down and a long eight from just outside the 10. 
Lasher. Pump fake fires. Over there. Batted up in the air and in to caught for a touchdown. Wow, off a pirate defender and right into the waiting arms of one of the CLU receivers. Holding that one in for the Kingsmen was Tyler Shimomura. Boy, tough break for the Pirates. Tough break on the fumble to set up that drive. Al Burgos trying to make this a six-point game. 21. It is six points now. Trying to make it a five-point game. Burgos flag comes flying in. Ball start. We'll push him back five yards. So they want to try it again. So that will make this a 26-yard conversion attempt from right between the hashes. Place got kind of quiet, TJ. Yep. That's that's a play that'll take the life out of a stadium right there. Just an unfortunate break again for the Pirates. Good snap and hold, kick is up, looks good from here, and he knocks it through. So, 14-17 left to go in regulation time. New score, 21-16. to As uh, 13 unanswered points here by the visitors from California, and the Pirate offense needs to get a good drive together, settle down, give their defense a little chance to regroup, and get some points on the board to get some separation back in this football game. Yeah, you can blame that drive defensively on just being tired. Like oh, yeah. The, the Pirates defense was out there a long time on the previous drive, and then having to go right back out there after a few plays is uh, it's not the best if you're a defensive player. So the Pirates offense here needs to move the ball down the field, take some time off the clock, and just make it easier on their defense. And that play was so weird on that it touchdown, was. Merle. Like, it reminded me of, I don't know if you watched the Pitt-West Virginia game where the ball went right through the receiver's hands there at the end of the game, the West Virginia hands, uh, offensive player, and then the Pitt uh, defender caught it, took it to the end zone for a touchdown. Obviously a little different. Right. It went through the defender's hands this time and then went into the offensive player's hands for a touchdown. But unfortunate for the Pirates. Marion and Elijah Norris back to receive the kick here for the Pirates, it's Norris on the near side, Marion on the far side. And it's not going to matter because it's going to bounce five yards deep into the end zone and out of the end line. So the offense has been a little sluggish here to start the second half. Let's see what they can do to change things up and get some momentum back. And if you're Marion here, you got to forget about that last play. You're a great player. You've proven it time and again. Just come back and help your team out the only way you can by getting positive yards on the ground. Yeah, they're going to get him the ball sooner rather than later. They want him to have that short memory and forget all about that. That's what the best athletes do, Merle. They yep. have that short memory. I guess football players especially, too. Although and with Sam LeBou on the field regions. right now, Sam LeBou, number seven, lined up at the right side. And he's going to get the carry. Yeah. And going to be stacked up in the line of scrimmage, driven backwards. It's going to be no gain in the play. He's actually lost a couple yards. They'll bring up a second down and 12. So no Curry's turnovers. On the stop. Yeah, exactly. No, no turnovers, turnovers right here. Cannot give them the ball in this field position. Second and 12 coming up. Ball spotted at the Pirate 23 yard line. Trying to protect a five point lead. Two receivers left, one to the near side. Gilpin. Pitch out right side. For the 25, nice hole this Good time, but loss. a flag comes in. 40, 45, 50, shoved out of bounds at the 43-yard line. A really, really nice run, I believe, by Sam LeBlue, but there's laundry on the field, and I think this one's going to be coming back. It most certainly is, Merle, and that's unfortunate because there was a lot of great blocks right there by the Pirates wide receivers that sprung yeah. number seven, Sam LeBlue, up basically near the 40-yard line of Kalu. And it looks like more cramps right now plaguing the Pirates. Josh Taylor, offensive lineman out of Richmond, George Ranch High School. I wonder if he played, he probably did play with JoJo Wilson, same high school. Tanner 
Taylor just a year older than JoJo. So instead of having the ball out in your midfield, it's going to be spotted all the way back to the Pirate 13-yard line. They've got to get it out to the 35, so I'm second and 22. I think next to, like, targeting Merle and, like, having, you know, a player rejected, holding penalties are the ones that kill teams the most. I agree. Because you have a play like that that you get great momentum, and now you're put back. Like what, 18 yards? Yeah. 20 plus yards away from the first down marker, and it's still second down. Play action pass, Gilpin. Looking, firing over the center. Got a receiver wide open. Jojo Carter at the 50. 45 40. Cuts it back to the 35, and he's going to be down there. No flags. A big play for the Pirates. Nice run. Jojo Wilson got behind the defense. And just like that, Southwestern back in business. Jojo Wilson out of George Ranch. Good stuff, man. 14, 24, 34, 44, about a 46-yard play, give or take. That'll fix a holding penalty right there, Merle. Yeah, yeah, that's one <laughs> way to overcome it. It looks like Brian Gutierrez, or, yeah, it looks like 69, got his helmet ripped off yeah. by a Calu defender. He did not look happy out there, and he's <laughs> not a guy you want to make mad, trust me. So flip the field, put the ball at the Kingsman 36-yard line. 12.56 to go, Pirates in business. Two receivers wide left, high snap, handoff. The blue, boss it to the outside, cuts it back up inside the 35, down to the 33-yard line. Gain of about three on the play. That'll bring up a second down and seven. So the blues come in, give a little bit of a spark here for the Pirate offense. Yeah, the freshman out of Sugarland playing well here. Maybe Coach Austin, Coach Matt's giving him a chance with Marion having that fumble on the previous drive. Second and three from the 33-yard line. Two receivers wide right, one to the near side. Pitch out left side, the blue. Breaks a tackle and gets it down to the 30-yard line. That's going to bring up a third down at about five. Didn't go down right there. He's running real hard right now. So third and five coming up. Third and five from the 32. Two receivers wide left, one to the near side. Gilpin Good gonna block. keep it himself. Got a great block. Inside the 30, the 26 yard line. And that's gonna be very near the first down marker. As the clock continues to roll, 11.25 to go. The Pirates getting close to Fournier range here. And that's like fourth and about a foot. Wow. That, that play was strung forward by that bo block by LeBlu right there. As he com comes off the sideline. Looks like number 32 coming into the game for the Pirates. Big fourth down here, going to go for it. Fourth down and about a foot from the 27-yard line. Gilpin in the shotgun. High snap. And looks like he, he got, got it. from behind anyway. Yeah, he got it down to the 25. He only needed about the 26 and a half, and he picked up about two yards. Good hands, though, because that snap was pretty hot. Yeah, that's, that snap came out faster than a Nolan Ryan fastball right there. That was... <laughs> yeah. And he was already going forward, too, so he had to jump up. Ooh, that's good athleticism right there by Gilpin. Because that could have been really bad. Yeah, could have been. <laughs> that goes by him. But the Pirates pick it up. First down and 10 at the Kingsman 25-yard line. 10.35 to go, clock rolling. Trying to stretch this back out to a two-possession game. One receiver wide left, two to the near side. Got Joey Robinson there, tight end. Gilpin dropping back, great protection, looking, firing over to the left side, got a receiver open, incomplete, looking for a flag, and there it is. It's a late flag. Yeah. <laughs> I will say that's a late flag. Official wanted to take his time and make sure. I think that was JoJo Wilson again on the route, looking for the number. That is Wilson, number 80. I think the ref just got the flag stuck in his waistband. Yeah. We'll yeah. go with that. Defender never turned around. That, that'll get you every time. Yep. So 
Well, they'll take away the first down markers here, Merle. It's going to be first and goal to 10. Boy, this would be a big touchdown for Southwestern. Knock it in. First down and goal from the 10-yard line. 10-19 to go. Hand off. Up the middle. Break and a tackle. Back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about it. Uh, Tasegi on the carry. He's already got one touchdown reception in the ball game. Trying to take that one in from the uh, from the ground, but no, nothing doing. It's going to bring up a second and goal from the 10-yard line. Now, field goal from here would get you back up to an eight-point lead, but it's still a one-possession game. You're not thinking field goal if you're if you're the Pirates. No, no, no. You're definitely not thinking field goal. You want to get this in the end zone right here. This is a statement right here for this offense. If they can get it in the end zone, show that they can come back after everything that just happened on those previous drives. Show they can come back and just put some points on the board. Trips here to the near side. Nobody wide left. Second and goal from the 10. And timeout. They can buy the Pirates. It's an important play. They want to talk this over and get it right. Well, a good opportunity for Southwest. They've been kind of punching the mouth here with a couple of bad breaks and that kind of thing from CLU. So a chance to answer back. That's what good teams do when they face a little adversity. They answer back. 100%. And, you know, we talk about this team, Merle, and them having experience now. They were a lot younger last year, and they found themselves in a lot of situations just like this last year. They had a lead early in the game, and then whether it be after halftime, later in the fourth, they lost that lead and then lost that momentum. So they've been through this before. They know what it takes to avoid those types of situations. Right now, it's just important for them to show that on the field, right? So big points coming up right here, big plays coming up for this Pirates offense. Going to be second down and goal after the timeout. Two receivers to the near side. One receiver wide left. Gilpin. Hand off right side, trying to turn the corner on the jet sweep, and not going to get there. Back to the line of scrimmage, and that is about it. That's going to bring up a third down and ten. Tasegi on the carry. Voice of the big play. Coming up with a nine-minute mark. And if anything here, you want to at least, if you can't get the touchdown, put the ball back in the middle of the hash right, marks right. for your field goal kicker. Great point. They're on the near hash right now. Gilpin in the shotgun. He's going to roll right. And now fires over to the end zone, and in Kapoor had him open and undershot him. Just kind of short-armed that pass a little bit. That was six points trying to get it to Wilson, but it's going to be a two-year point, a tough angle field goal attempt here for the Pirates. Only 27 yards, but it's from the near half, so he's going to have to, Fournier's going to have to slice this one in. Sometimes as a quarterback, they're just too open, and yeah. you get a little too happy. It's like when you go hunting for white-tailed deer, and... You have the perfect shot in a deer, and you start getting a little buck fever. You miss. Doesn't happen to me, Merle. <laughs> never, never. Happens to other people sometimes. Damien Gomez a hold, a good snap and hold. Fournier with the kick, and it's blocked. And the CLU defense gets a huge stand. And with 8:47 to go, it's going to be up to the Pirate defense to protect a narrow five-point lead. Mm mm mm. It's been a tale of two halves, right? It now, has. Merle. It's like a completely different team on both sides from the first and second half. And it's crazy because just in like six minutes in the third, it was 21-3. Yeah, yeah. So, first and ten from the 20-yard line for the Kingsmen. Trips to the right. Lasher, handoff up the middle. And tripped up after about a two-yard pickup. Going to bring up a second down and eight. And with eight minutes to work here, Merle, you got a lot of time for the Cal Lou offense. So a lot of time just to take your time, yeah. move down the field at your own pace. You don't want to give the ball back to the Pirates if you don't have to. Second down and eight from the 22-yard line. Two receivers wide right, one to the near side. 
And off right side, Martin trying to turn the corner and high steps his way out across the 25 to the 28 yard line. Going to bring up a critical third down and two. And how awesome would it be for this Pirates defense to make the Kalu offense just go three and out. Oh man. After that previous drive stalled out for the Pirates offense. And they're bringing in big number 99, Jalen Levine out of Houston, Texas, the freshman for the Pirates. Coaches. Third. Third and two from the 28. Lasher, handoff up the middle, and boy, he just got it out across the 30-yard line to the 31. Just enough for the first down, and CLU was still alive with 721 to go. It was all plugged up there, Merle. But then right then he found that crease. The running back got through yep. it and got that extra yard to get the first down. Well, fresh set of downs for the Kingsmen. First down and 10 from their own 31-yard line. Moving from right to left. Fourth quarter, Pirates by five. Coming up in the seven-minute mark. One to see a wide right to the near side. Lasher in the shotgun, dropping back. Looking, firing the left side, caught, and breaking free to the 40, the 45, up the near sideline to the 50-yard line. Went for the interception, didn't quite get it, and it turns into a 17-yard pickup for CLU. And those are the risks you take when you try yeah. to make a play on a, a break on the ball like that. And right now in this second half, the Cal Lutheran receivers are doing a great job in their matchups against the Southwestern I DBs. agree. That was Julio Angel. He had a nice catch earlier to, to extend the drive. First and 10 at their own 49. To receive his wide right, one to the near side. Lasher, hand off up the middle, Martin, and just bowls over a tackle down to the 46 yard line. Gain of about five yards on the play. That was Peyton Vaughn, took that hit head on. Second and five from the 46. Drive of the game right here, it looks like. Second and five from the 46. Coach Austin has asked this Pirates defense to step up, it seems like, every single quarter here, but none more than right now. Let's come and pick up. Pass over to the left side. That ball is caught inside the 20 to the 15 to the 5 and in the end zone. Touchdown. Cal Lutheran. Stanley Asigbu, the tight end. And credit to the offensive line for the Kingsman for picking up the blitz and giving Lasher time to find that ball down the field. And you go back, that block field goal oh. looking massive right now. Pirates trail for the first time tonight with five and a half to go. 537 to be precise. And now it looks like Kingsmen are going to go for two with just a one point lead. The kick doesn't do them much good. It's not over here. If the Pirates seems no. to make this stop, and you can get in field goal range within the next five minutes. Yeah, they a lot run of out of, yeah it was like they were about to let the play clock run yeah, out. Yeah, a lot of confusion there. They couldn't quite figure out on personnel and what play to come in. But, hey, kudos to uh, the Kingsmen. I mean, down 21-3, to three, all the momentum in, in favor of the Pirates. They didn't give up on the game, and they fought all the way back to take the lead here on the road. Yeah, I remember you saying, Merle, with the 21-3 lead, we were up. We said, it's not over with yep. six minutes left of the third, and definitely was not. But that that call to go for two by Cal Lou, yeah. right now coming back from when they didn't get it, they could have already had 23. They could have already had uh, – right. well, they would have had 24 at that point because they went for two again, didn't get it. Yes. So, yeah, they, they left some points on the board there where they wouldn't have to go for two in this situation. Well, either way, the good news is for Pirates fans is you don't need to take it down for a touchdown. Like yeah. you said, three points would do it. Depending on how the next play ends up, it'll either be for a tie or for the win. Right. So 22-21. Caldu going to go for two to try to nudge it up to a three-point advantage. Lasher in the shotgun. Marion lined up to his right side.
Lasher rolling right. Under pressure, and that ball swatted away. Oh, he caught it. I thought he swatted away. I don't know how he got that through there. A beautiful diving catch there by the Calhoun receiver. So the and it, it was great coverage, too. That's yeah. the thing. Like, it was beautiful coverage, too, by the Southwestern defender. Just an even better catch. So the two-point conversion is good, and the lead is 24-21 now for the Kingsman. 21 and answer points here. And it is... Uh, it's time to put on your big boy pants and get a good drive here for the Pirates. Yeah, this is when your leaders need to step up, your seniors, your captains. They need to get your, your team together and just say, hey, guys, it's not over. We still have five minutes, 37 right. seconds left. We can take the ball down the field. We've done this before already in this game. This game is not over. They have momentum, yes. It's going to be tough, yes. But at the end of the day, we can get this done. And that's going to be just important for these seniors and these captains just yep. to tell that their teammates because right now you can feel it. The Cal Lutheran sideline, they're hyped up right now. Yeah, they might have come in here. Like you said, a lot of their guys back, they, they remember 37-7. They might have come in here and thought this one was going to be a bit of an easy cakewalk. And they kind of had to find their sea legs a little bit. And they've done that and more here in the second half. Now it's going to be up to the Pirates to find that extra gear and pull this one out of the fire. Maybe they were still jet lagged. Could be. <laughs> Could be. The first. Norris on the near hash. Marion on the far hash for the Pirates. Burgos to sophomore set to kick it away. Over oh, a big return here. We haven't been able to pull it out of the 20 yard line so far, Merle. We can at least do that, maybe get it to the 30. Right. Give this offense some room to work. And it's going to go to the near side. It's going to be north. We're going to let that one go into and out of the end zone, and the Pirates will take over first down 10 at the 25-yard line. 5.37 to go. Needing a field goal to tie, touchdown to take the lead here. You have more than enough time to get down the field. The Pirates offense shouldn't be in a rush right now. Right. That's what Coach Maddox is telling them. Just, hey, guys, it's okay. Let's take a deep breath, compartmentalize everything, and we're going to get it down the field, let our kicker make a kick. Yeah, we've had a fumble after a big run. Gave the ball back to Cal Lou. Gave them some momentum. A blocked field goal. Opened the door for them to come back, drive it down the field. A ball that was tipped by a Pirate defender into the hands of a Kingsman receiver. Law of averages would tell you the Pirates should get a break here. It's a lot of wacky plays that have gone against the Pirates here. Gilpin sidearm slings it out to the 35-yard line. Wilson makes a nifty move and dives out to the 39, about a 13-yard pickup. First down, Southwestern. It's a little coming out party yeah. for JoJo Wilson here. Up to the 39. He's going to be an exciting player to watch, I think. This he year, is, bro. yeah. First down 10 at the 39 yard line. Trips wide left, one to the near side. Dropping back, Gilpin rolling to his left. Pump fake, now he's gonna try to extend the play and fires over the left side. Caught at the 50 yard line. That's gonna be good for a pirate first down. Coming back was crazy. Coming back to bail out his quarterback. Picks up 11 yards for a first down. And that's what you gotta do with these quarterbacks that can run like that. You have to continue extending the routes, extending the plays if you're a wide receiver, Merle. And so crazy, great job right there in doing that. And he finds himself with his first catch of the game. Came at a good time. Ball in the midfield stripe on the far hash. 4.45 to go. Clock not a factor yet. One receiver wide left. Trips to the near side for Gilpin. He's got the empty back set going. Gilpin dropping back. Good protection. Now he's going to direct traffic. Going to his left. Fires over to the left side. That ball is incomplete. But yep. a flag down. Going to be a holding call. Wilson was trying to bounce it back to the outside. And some guy in white had a hold of the jersey right in front of the officials. Yeah, I thought that uh, Wilson got grabbed right there. Yep. I couldn't tell from our angle. But right there, the ref was all on top of it. And they're going to get the big one. Pass interference, not defensive holding. So that'll be a 15-yarder. And Pirates are getting dangerously close to 48 territory, if nothing else, with 4.23 to go.
Northbrook over Alding 27 to 14 and our second game going on in Houston tonight. That one's in the book. So we're the only plane on the runway tonight here on the Vibe Live Network. So we got a lot of crowd right now tuning in, right? Yeah, oh yeah. Yep. I love it. First and 10 at the 35-yard line. Two receivers wide left. Handoff up the middle. And makes the first guy miss. And the second inside the 30 down to the 28-yard line. He's had a pretty good night. Gianni Tasegi picked up seven on that one. Going to make up a second down and three. He was caught by his shoestring. He right was, there. wasn't he? It looked like he was about to get ahead of steam and start going. Run. Still got a seven-yard run, though. Second and three from the 28. Raindrops on the window here. Two receivers wide left, one to the near side. Gilpin dropping back. Good protection. Now the pocket breaks down. He breaks free. Rolling to his right. Pump fake and sidearm to the far side. Incomplete. Nice attempt there. But incomplete. Going to bring up a third down and three. Great effort by Wilson. Just couldn't quite tippy toe up the sideline. Great effort by both men right there, Wilson yeah. and Gilpin. Gilpin avoiding a sack right there, which would have definitely been terrible for the Southwestern offense. Well, it'll be a 45-yarder from here. That's a lot to ask on a nasty night. It'd be an interesting play here if they don't pick it up here. Hopefully they can pick it up and it won't matter. Third and three from the 28-yard line. One receiver wide left, two to the near side. Gilpin. Shuttle pass left side. They're going to get the first out to Sagi inside the 25 down to the 23-yard line. And a quick pitch Ooh. right there from Gilpin. Yeah. I thought the, the Cal Lutheran defender, he could have stepped up and just grabbed that in the midair. That's what it looked like from our angle, Merle. Luckily, though, Gianni got the ball, took it past the markers, pirate first down. Gilpin was like me with my paycheck. He was just the middleman. That ball no sooner hit his hands than he was pitching it out to the left <laughs> side. That's your wife taking that money. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she, she's listening. She'll well, agree with you. I know. That's you. why I said it. <laughs> Pirates pick up a huge first down. First down and 10 at the 23-yard line. 3.05 to go in regulation time. One receiver wide left, two to the near side. Gilpin going to keep it himself. Bounce it to the left side of the 20. 15, cutting it back down to the 10-yard line. Inside the 10. Oh, ball. fumble ball oh. came out. And CLU is going to recover the football. And the Pirates heartbreak here again. Wow. And I guess if you go back to that first play of the game, Earl, where we dropped the ball and we got it back. Right. I, I don't know if it was foreshadowing, but some of the biggest plays for the Pirates have ended with a turnover. Yes. That's the third one. And it's, it, it, it's a tough one. That's tough for Swallow right there. But it's not over. We still have three timeouts. Defense has done a great job all game. Got to get a stop here. Got to get a stop. A turnover will be better. Kingsman take over on their own 10-yard line. And off Martin. And he's going to push his way out to the 13-yard line. I'm not sure how many timeouts the Pirates have left. They're going to take one of them right here. I think they've got one more after this one, but I wouldn't swear Time to out. it. Pirate, yeah, you're right. Second, we only yep. have yeah, we have one left because we took that other one when we were about to go uh, with Gilpin. With, right. We, on the previous driver, we didn't score on the block field goal drive. That one, we took a timeout there. So it'll be second down and six to go from the 14-yard line. Thank you, Mike Rose. I see it now. I do have it marked up on the score. I figured they would, but those little lines right underneath the team names. Little hash marks there. My vision's not that good, Merle. I can't see that. Well, second and six from the 14-yard line. Think Martin's getting the ball here, Merle? I would think so. 
Southwest is stacking the box right now. Yep, they give it a number five, and he's got a nice hole out across the 20 yard line, driving the pile out to the 24. That'll stop the clock momentarily while they move the chains, but Time boy. Time That's the final timeout for the Pirates, and South and uh, CLU can pretty much bleed out the clock from here. Yeah, even if we were to stop them, yeah. they would, we would have minimal time left. Boy, this is going to be a woulda, coulda, shoulda. Yeah, that, that, that coach's show is going to be fun for you on Monday, Merle. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not as fun as it looked like it was going to be about an hour ago. Let's put it that way. Yeah, at halftime I was eating the sausage sandwich, some cinnamon rolls. I was having a great old time up here. I wouldn't say the same right now. I mean, the story of the game right now, it was defense in the right. beginning, but then it turned into the defense of Cal Lutheran. Right, right. Getting three turnovers in the second half. Yeah. Which was how the game started last year out in California. Put the Pirates behind the eight ball early. It's been kind of the mirror image here tonight. First and 10 at the 24-yard line, 2.41 to go. Pirates out of timeouts. Let's get a turnover here. Martin, both hands on the football, picked up a yard or two, but that's pretty much irrelevant. Calhoun can just milk this clock down inside of two minutes before they snap it again. Luckily for the Pirates, though, Merle, this isn't a conference game. I was just thinking that, yeah. It won't matter when, in the grand scheme of things. Yes, it's going to go on your record if we're not able to make a stop here, get a turnover. But it's not a conference game. Second and eight from the 26. Hand off to Martin again. He's going to be stacked up at the line of scrimmage for about a yard game. Pirates taking for the football, but Martin doing a good job at hanging on to it. And with third down and seven coming up, They'll snap this ball with about 109 to go. So the Pirates should get it back if they can get the stop. Yeah, it'll be minimal time, but yeah. we, we will get it back. We'll have a chance. Unless for some odd reason Calhoun decides to pass it here, which I can't imagine. I can't imagine they would. To take that risk. They're going to call a timeout here and talk it over. Play clock down to one, and there's your timeout. So they stopped the clock with 70 ticks left on the clock. They're facing a third and seven. Yeah, that's awful risky. Yeah, like Lasher has connected with his receivers in this fourth quarter, but you always run that risk of him overthrowing it. He right. was doing that a lot earlier in the game. He did it here in the second half. Give it to Martin. See what you can do. And like you said, Merle, even if they get three yards, don't get the first down, they right. still leave Southwest with only about 20 seconds left. If you haven't been with us all night long, it's been a wild one from the beginning. The Pirates' first touchdown of the year came on a punt attempt for CLU. The punter dropped it in the end zone, and instead of taking a safety, the Pirates knocked him off the football and pounced on it to take a 7-0 lead. We've had long runs, ending in fumble for the, that went against the Pirates. We've had a CLU pass off a deflection that went into the end zone for them. Third and seven from the 27. Got to get your stop right here. Going to hand it off to Martin right side, and they, they do get the stop. He's pushing the pile forward out to the 30-yard line, but a good play there by Gomez, Alexander Gomez. And it's fourth down. The punting unit will come on here for the Kingsmen. 55 seconds to go, about a 23-second difference. So you'll get it back, and you'll have time for maybe one or two deep throws down the field. Yeah. Probably two. Unless they drop the snap again. They could drop the snap. You never know. Pressure not, bus not that pipes. I'm trying to jinx him or anything. Pressure bus pipes in this punter. You never know how he'll react. You, you don't know if he's been in this situation before. There's your timeout. 
Timeout. Kingsman. Their third and final timeout of the half. Twenty-four seconds left. Timeout taken. By the Kingsman. Coach Anthony Lugo right there, standing by the official. Let's get that timeout with one second left. It's going to be fourth and four, almost irrelevant. Now, one thing you don't want to do if you're the Pirates is get drawn off sides here. Yeah, definitely don't want to do that. And honestly, if you're Cal Lou, if you're able to get the punt off, I'm not even going to punt it to the Southwestern Returnman. I'm going to try and angle this out of bounds. Yep. Put it somewhere where he can't get it and maybe get a roll out of it. Get some more time off the clock. Now the Pirates are bringing 10. Elijah Norris is the only man back. He's standing at the 34-yard line. Low snap, field to clean, and a short, high kick. Go get it. And it's going to angle out of bounds, so mm. not a lot of distance. It's going to be marked at the 49. They're still triangulating. Wow. That's got the 48-yard line. That ball only traveled 18. Foul making a great great play, great run and catch, but that personal foul, because we were going to be like the 50, that put us around the 34. We are back. We will get you caught up. Unfortunately, we lost the Internet. It just went out. We're still playing. It's 30-24 to 24 in overtime. We'll get you caught up here. We are recording, so we will have the full archive uploaded later on tonight. A point after attempt here coming. Good snap and hold. The kick is up. And it's good. So the Pirates will get it back. Trailing at 31 to 24 in overtime. So let's get you caught up. And again, we apologize. That's the one thing we can't control is the internet connection. There is no internet here inside the stadium. And uh, we lost the, uh, lost the network for a few moments. So, 24, 21, 16 seconds to go. The Pirates trying to remember how it all worked out. They, uh, Cal Lou punted with about 20, 25 right. seconds left. It, it was, was a bad punt. Pass. It was a bad punt, right. and then left around six extra seconds. If we put us at 17 right. seconds, then a personal foul by a Cal Lou defender on the right. punt put the Pirates from where it would have been the 50 all the way up to near the 34. Right. And so at that point, Pirates had no timeouts. We threw to Ethan Powell on a third down, put us around the 18-yard line. We spiked it with one second. And Charlie Fournier with the uh, extra point there, the uh, field goal to tie it up at 24-24 as time expired. And the first series of overtime, Cal Luthan just scored a touchdown on a pass to Angel. So now the Pirates need a touchdown and an extra point to force a second overtime. And the handoff up the middle. Yeah, on the carry. on the carry. That's going to bring up a second and two, or second and eight after a two-yard pickup. Could not have happened at a worse time. Totally out of our control. Just lost the internet connection. Y'all should definitely go back and watch those those plays, though. Yep. Highly yeah. recommend. Second and eight from the 23-yard line. Trips here to the near side. One receiver wide left. Dropping back. Looking downfield. Pass. Caught at the 10. And down to the 5-yard line. It's going to be first and goal. To Sagi again. He's had a big night. So first and goal from the five. Need the touchdown and the extra point to force the second overtime. The big tight end, Joey Robertson, checking in right now. Five yards out, he's dangerous. Two receivers wide left, one on the near side. Gilpin, going to keep it himself right. Now he's going to look, now firing over to the right side, and it is incomplete. Good coverage. Yeah, very good coverage. Pretty good throw to JoJo Wilson. Got it to where only Wilson had a shot at it, but it's going to bring up a second to go from the five. Good job there by the Southwestern O-line, picking up that blitz. As Robinson checks out and Crazy checks back in. Sagi in there. He's been having a great night, like you said. He's got one more highlight in him here. Let's hope so. Second and goal from the five. 
Trips wide left, two to the near side. Gilpin dropping back. The foul. And flag out into the end zone. As the flag came in, no word from the official. I don't know if it was a, a reception at the goal line or. But we'll check the flag anyway. Oh, false start on the Pirates, so a dead play. Didn't even happen. That Second to goal from the 10. That does hurt. Ethan Powell caught that in the end zone for a touchdown. That That's unfortunate. Got to have your feet set. Second and five to second and ten here. Yeah, that's a big difference. Second and goal from the ten yard line. To Segi to the right side, dropping back. Stepping up is Gilpin. Breaks free. Keeps himself alive to the five, cutting it back, puts his shoulder down and gets it down to the three yard line. So you've got two plays to pick up three yards. Good run by Gilpin. Tough run by Gilpin. He's like a magician back there, Merle. Like, <laughs> it looked like he was dead in the water, about to get sacked. Somehow, some way, got to the four-yard line, the three-yard line actually, to make it third and goal from the three. Third and goal from the three. Two plays to pick up three yards. Oh boy! One receiver wide left trips to the near side. Gilpin with the empty back set. Quarterback keeper, left side, they're gonna cut it back up. And very close, he's into the end zone, touchdown. Does it again. Wow. Does it again. Look, dead in the water, finds himself in the end zone. Pretty good defense by the Kingsman too. He just cut it back inside, it wasn't gonna be denied. Absolutely showing out in this first game here in his senior year. There was a flag in the play. I didn't see it, but it was on the defense anyway, so it won't matter. So now, do the Pirates go for two in the win or one for the second overtime? They are talking about it right now. Yes, they are. I don't see Fournier Austin, coming on. Coach Mask. They're talking about it. They're, they, they're thinking about sending these guys home right now. If this is a conference game, I think you kick it. If it's a non-conference game, they're going for it. They're going to go for the win. We've been playing football for three hours and three minutes. And it's going to come down to this final play, a two-point conversion attempt for the win. Fournier in the shotgun, trips to the near side. And CLU is going to call a timeout, I think, timeout. and think about this. Wow. That's their only timeout. Only timeout. Week one, right, Merle? Week one. Yeah. <laughs> Good thing I had a physical and the doctor said I was in good shape. You don't have to worry about a heart condition. <laughs> wow, what a way to open up the season. Yeah, if every game's going to be like this, I don't know <laughs> if I'll make it, Merle. <laughs> I'm so sorry about the Internet uh, thing, but, again, there's really nothing we can do about that. They are re uh, renovating the Internet here in the stadium. It should be up and running again by October, and we can get off the hot spot and get back on the network. But it happened at the worst possible time, of course. But we will get the archive posted later on tonight, so you can go back and see how crazy TJ and I went. All right. Paul Lund riding in says, go Pirates finish this. Go Jason Lund, number two, defensive end. Here we go. Two-point conversion attempt for the win. Trips to the near side. Gilpin, empty back set. Dropping back. Rolling right. In trouble. Fires over to the right side. You got Caught. it. Did he get it? Did it. The Pirates win. I have no idea who caught it because he was mobbed immediately, but Southwestern in overtime opens the 2022 season with a 32 to 31 win in overtime. A swarm of pirates. I love it. I love it, Merle. The refs are gone. <laughs> they are long They're gone. Out. <laughs> Bye, Doogie. <laughs> I knew he caught it. My oh only question my was, goodness. was he across the goal line? Uh, they were he 100% right was across the goal yeah. line, 100%. What a way to start wow. 2022, bro. 32 to 31.
And guess what? That coach's show Monday night's going to be a fun night after all. Yeah, that two-minute mark in this <laughs> game. We're at two-minute mark. We're saying, I don't know. Hey, what we say? Game not over, though. Game's not over. Oh, my goodness. Stick around for the post-game show. Chuck Tracy will talk to Coach and imagine a couple of the players. The local convenience store sales are going to go up yep. tonight. Beverages are going off the, the racks tonight. Oh, my goodness. And, Chuck, the first information we're going to need from you when you come on the air is who caught the touchdown pass. He was sworn before we could even pick out the number. So right, here comes here Coach go, Austin. We go, we go. And we'll send it down to Chuck on the sideline with Head Coach Joe Austin. Take it away, sir. Ken, the new athletic director, congratulating Coach Austin. Go for it, Chuck. Plug him in. Time to sing the fight song. There he is. All oh, right, oh, now oh, we got to get to go. Don't drop your phone, Chuck. That's all right. <laughs> I don't know if it's in shirt, Chuck. Well, uh, he, he said he wants to do the fight song first. Yep. He's going to bring a couple players over. That sounds so good. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll talk to him. Hey, Chuck, do you know who it caught the touchdown to pass Joe. by chance? It was JoJo Wilson. JoJo should have known. Coming out party for yeah. Mr. Wilson. JoJo Wilson caught that. Oh, awesome. Oh, my goodness. This is huge. We talked earlier, Merle, about the experience, right? No situations. I think right there it paid dividends. Yes, it did. Yeah. Yep. What a game. Oh, man. Led 21 to 3, thought it was well in hand, fell behind 24 to, 2, 20, uh, 24 to 21. The breaks weren't going their way in the second half. They caught the break with the face mask penalty. That's what gave them life. Absolutely and incredible. Never give up. Nope. That's pirate spirit right there. And then you fall behind in overtime right as we were getting back on the air. You fall behind by seven. You've got to have a touchdown to win. I'm guessing number eight is going to be one of our guests. It's just just to, going to go out on the limb here. Him, Landry. I can see that. Stand by waiting to hear from Coach Austin and a couple of pirate players of his choice. Get some of those guys dancing, Mike, yeah. Thank God these guys are better football players than dancers. <laughs> <laughs> pirate fight will never die, Merle. That's the lyric right there that he showed that today. You know, it's funny. I, told, I mentioned that I had done a documentary about the, yeah. the program coming back. Found out during that documentary, they had to go find the school song. They didn't yep. know what the school song was. And a lot of people still don't. Yeah, and yeah. I do a lot of volleyball, softball games, and I'll play the fight song, and the girls look up. They're like, what is this? It's, right. it's our fight song. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell Chuck's out there just by that bright yellow. Exactly, yeah, yeah. That's why he wears it. I love it. Go Congratulations, man. You ready? Yeah. All right, we'll send it down to Chuck. Chuck, it, uh, Chuck, take it away. Chuck Crazy down the sidelines with Landry Gilpin to start with. You got the floor, sir. Okay, Landry. Um, talk to me a little bit about that second half. Cal Lou you know, came back pretty furiously, put us a little bit behind the eight ball, but your leadership, the offense, the defense, no, no give up. Talk about that a little bit. First of all, the defense, wow, those guys played – Probably the best game of defense that I've seen in the circumstances that we were in. They were solid all night. And we told them at halftime, hey, y'all held us all together for the first half. We're going to help you guys. We're going to alleviate some of that stuff going into the second half. And when things came down to it, that's what was happening. And they stayed with us. They stayed supportive on the sideline when we were struggling. And we did the same for them. And it was an entire team effort. O-line played amazing tonight. The receivers played awesome tonight. Defense played a hell of a game. Coaches called a hell of a game. And... It's just really exciting for us all right now. Excellent. Now, talk about that the last series there right before halftime. I mean, right before the end of the game, the field goal needed to, to tie it up, send it into overtime, and then the overtime, the clutch plays that your offense put together. Talk about Man, that a little bit. Those guys, when I talk about those guys are in the lab every day, preparing for things like that, the consistency of the job of knowing what we're going to do, 
but a situation like that comes into it knowing how we're going to handle it and that's exactly what we did we trusted them and we followed the process and they got us where we were congratulations Thank you. who's next Oh, yeah, I know you, Blaine. I interviewed you last <laughs> yeah, yeah. Blaine Cork and linebacker here. Talk a little bit about the defense. Y'all had a big game, especially in the first half. You know, there was some breakdowns there in the second half. Y'all stuck. Uh, that's a tough offense to shut down. Y'all really did do some uh, severe work. I think. It's your thoughts. Yeah, shout out to the whole defense and the offense for bailing us out on that last play. I mean, just crazy games, coaches, everybody. I mean, as far as the defense goes, we had a game plan coming in. We knew play the player. We had a better team, and we were just going to stick down and do everything that we needed to do. We knew that uh, everything we did when they came out, as far as, like, the game plan and stuff, everything was prepared. We had a couple of unfortunate plays, like uh, that chip pass, that touchdown. Part, yeah, that's part but, of football. You know, we got back to the sideline, and everybody rallied back up, and we just had to make a stop. So. Well, talk to me about uh, how it is when a guy that weighs about 225 yeah. coming through there on a regular. Yeah, uh, we got a little rude awakening at first. He's a big boy, but uh, we just – we had to rally the ball, hit him low, drive through, and, you know. And y'all, y'all did a good job swarming yeah. towards the ball. We knew, it, you know, we can't rely on one person to make a tackle on the open field because he most likely was going to break a tackle, so everybody just running to the ball, and he just did their job. Y'all did excellent, man. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Great victory. Oh, and you're uh, Alex Gomez? Yes, sir. Another linebacker here. Uh, what, Alex, what, do you, what? give us your thoughts on the defensive performance first. Hey, you know, we stuck it out. It was a long game. It was, it was humid. It was hot. We were cramping it, but we pulled it through. So there were some mistakes that we made, but we cleaned them up. And we're, we're talk. Well, I tell you, you know, when there were mistakes, y'all had short memory about it. You come back out, you guys would make plays. Yes, sir, definitely. We did have short memory. Our coaches uh, prepared as well. We went out there and executed and got the job done. And you got a strip in the first half, didn't you? Yeah. Uh, to talk about that play a little bit. Uh, it was a reverse. You know, we were prepared for it this week. Our coaches made sure that we were ready for the trick play. I started coming the other way and just got on my horse. Yeah, you showed a lot of speed for a linebacker. <laughs> I'm just teasing you out. Good job. Congratulations on the win. Coach, I, I thought I had my blood pressure under control, and then, <laughs> then I came out here tonight. Yeah. Uh, t- talk to me uh, first about that the decision to go for – there instead of the tie uh, there in overtime. Well, the great thing about headsets these days is you can talk to your whole staff. And so um, the defensive coaches were on board with playing aggressive and playing for the win. Our offensive coaches were on board. And uh, we had time for us to talk about do we have a play we like? And we knew what we wanted to do. And so there was no – that was the decision. And we knew at the beginning of that drive that when we scored we were going to go for it. Well, and, and I think, for one, there's a lot of maturity that was shown by your team out here on the field tonight. Uh, there were moments when you could kind of see a lesser team might allow the game to get away from them. But your Pirates, they never gave up. and They were all the way until the very last second of regulation through overtime. Talk about that. Yeah, I would agree with that. You know, you have to give the Kings a lot of credit. They played an unbelievable fourth quarter. Yes, I mean, did. they made every play. And there were times where we didn't make a whole lot of plays. But as you said, we stuck we stuck with it. And we got a break there at the end, a good field position to get in to get in that field goal. Um, the officials did a great job of seeing the clock, and there was a full second. So yes. um, they did that excellent. And how about Charlie, you know, being nails and just, just, yeah. and just banging that thing? Um, you know, our defense is out on the field a lot tonight. And so it's hard for a first game. The field position was against us. Uh, and our offense did some good things at times, but they weren't as consistent as I know they would like to be. And so, uh, it, as you said, I'm agreeing with you. You know, we, we just stuck with it. We stuck with it. Our defense hung in there. And then when, when we had the chance to go for the win, um, you know, if we hadn't got it, everybody was saying, you know, you should have tied it. But because <laughs> everybody had saying gives everything. But that was our decision. We were going to go for two and go for the win. We had one play to, to win that game, and we wanted to take that opportunity. And it was an uh, excellent play call. Um, talk about the uh, young receiver there that made the reception. Yeah, JoJo Wilson had a great game. He he had some big catches for us. We also drew penalties. When they, yeah. could, they couldn't cover him, they had to grab it. And so we, we, when we targeted him, he was moving the ball for us. We threw him some screens in the first half. So a really good first appearance for, for JoJo. Very talented. Um, and so a really good uh, coming out party, I guess, for him. He's a name that folks will – get to know well and we'll talk about it on monday or you will with merle but you know there are some things that were out on the field that obviously can uh, oh, be yeah. improved upon and and as a coach that's one of the things you always look at even in victory 
is is where can we get better? Yeah, Talk we, about that. We, yeah, we didn't play a great second half. We we, we didn't play a great second half. Um, it, really, in any of the three phases. So we've got a lot we can work on. Congratulations on the win, Coach. Thank it you. It was excellent. Back to you, Merle. All right. Thanks, Chuck. Thanks, Coach. And thanks to all the guys uh, for uh, stopping by and saying hello. And, wow, what a way to start the season. 32-31 Pirates get the win in overtime. And uh, we're going to pivot back around and get TJ. For all you folks at home, we're sorry. We're going to get TJ and I back on camera here. I don't know if they want to see us, Merle. I don't know. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. think they do. <laughs> What a way to start the game, or start the year, I mean. That was pretty crazy. You know, at the end of the day, all that crazy stuff, if you're a Pirates fan, you're a Pirates player, a Pirates coach, you can't ask for much more than a win. That's exactly right, especially, you know, these, these guys met last year, it was 37-7, and seven, yep. went the wrong way, looked like it might swing that way again, but the Pirates were going to be denied. They uh, protect the home turf and get the season off to a 1-0 start. Yep, and with only four home games this year, That's right. each home game matters, even if it's a non-conference game. So, great job by the Pirates tonight. Well, any final thoughts here before we get out of here on this uh, Saturday night, Labor Day weekend? No, I just think the Pirates did a great job. This this whole game of showing just tenacity, not never quitting. Yeah. And at the end of the day, this is going to pay dividends later in the season. Well, thanks to everybody out there that's tuning in. Is Vibe Media bringing uh, Southwestern football back onto the network. Sorry about the little internet uh, glitch there. Uh, again, we will post the replay in its entirety so you can go back and, and uh, hear about what happened there right down the stretch. 16 seconds left. I can't imagine the worst possible time but hey, that's just the way it goes they, they want to go back and watch it now that's right me. that's exactly right so uh and again next week the pirates travel on the road to jackson mississippi we will not make that trip that'll be the only game that we don't do we'll be back on the air two weeks from the night uh from mary harden baylor as the pirates take on the defending national champion uh mary harden baylor crew what a way to start the season uh, the conference season against well you're going to find out pretty quickly i think in two weeks especially how good this pirate team is yep it's going to be very exciting for us i think up here merle so for everybody out there, on behalf of my broadcast partner, T.J. Vela, Mike Roseman on camera, uh, Josh Blanche, uh, great job out on camera, uh, Harley Hudson, Cindy Vincott, our technical director. Without her, half of our broadcast wouldn't be on the air. Rosie Vega back at the Comfy Cozy Vibe Live Studios, better known as her living room. Uh, shout out to my wife, Christina Weber, and my mom tuned into the broadcast. Thanks to everybody here at Southwestern. We're going to sign out the Pirates with a thrilling win at home tonight in overtime, 32 to 31. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Have a very safe and happy Labor Day, and we'll see you in a couple weeks. Actually, don't forget to come out to the Coaches Show, Southwestern Football Weekly, SU Football Weekly, Monday night, 6 o'clock at the Jack's Lounge at the beautiful Georgetown Sheraton. As Coach Austin likes to say, Bessie's got to sell some beers. So, you know, <laughs> get out there <laughs> and uh, enjoy the show. It's going to be a fun time after this comeback win here for the Pirates. Have a great weekend. We'll see you next time. Southwestern Pirates football on Vibe Live. Good night, everybody.